Chapter 1841 The Giant Egg at the Bottom of the Lake Translator Born to be the wolf, which had previously ignored Long Chen, bared its fangs at him now for giving it an order. However, it had just expressed its anger when Long Chen tossed out a medicinal pill that entered its mouth. The wolf's anger instantly vanished. After hesitating, it decided to stand. Once it stood, they had a higher vantage point, and Men Chi finally saw the circular mountain in the distance. When she saw that the mountain was surrounded by countless powerful 12th rank magical beasts, she sucked in a cold gasp of air just like Long Chen had done. What is going on? She asked. I'm not sure. But look, under the wolf is a cave. There's a special aura coming out of it, said Long Chen. This is the aura of primordial life, said Men Chi with a strange expression after sensing the air coming out of the cave. The wolf seemed to be somewhat alarmed to see Long Chen and Men Chi eyeing the cave, so it knelt down once more, staring at them. Men Chi had already jumped off of it, but the wolf stubbornly blocked the cave, no longer letting the two of them look. What is this primordial life aura? asked Long Chen. Men Chi said, it refers to the energy of a mother's amniotic fluid. It's the fluid which births life. Humans, magical beasts, Xuan beasts. They all rely on this primordial life fluid to grow in the womb. But why would such an aura be here? Men Chi shook her head, indicating that she didn't know either. However, this primordial life fluid which she had sensed was incredibly grand. She had never sensed such terrifying fluctuations. Come, let's go sneak a peek, said Long Chen. Sneak, a peek. Men Chi looked at the distant concentrated 12th rank magical beasts. It's fine. They just guard their own territory. We don't look like threats, so they won't bother us. Furthermore, because there are so many of them around, they won't make any moves until they have to. Perhaps there's a treasure in that circular mountain, so I feel like we should risk it. Long Chen smiled. Even at this time, you can still smile? No wonder others call you a monster, sighed Meng Chi. But that smile loosened her tense nerves. Meng Chi couldn't help sighing. If she could advance to the life star realm here, she would definitely have a chance to gather a few powerful housepits with this many 12th rank magical beasts obediently lying here. However, the patriarch and Li Xiangxuan had harshly warned all of them before entering the Yun Yang world that they could not make that breakthrough within this world. Otherwise, their cultivation bases would stagnate and they would never be able to advance again. Men Chi currently only had cloud and she had never had a chance to gather stronger houseboats. Ordinary 10th rank magical beasts weren't worth the effort for her. Long Chen brought Meng Chi forward carefully. They didn't intentionally suppress their auras because that would only raise the guards of the magical beasts. They simply walked over, passing by the magical beasts. Some of them looked coldly at them. Only a few unfriendly ones stood and raised their hackles at them in warning. However, even they didn't attack. When they encountered those bad-tempered magical beasts, Long Chen would make a slight detour around them, indicating he was harmless. After doing that, those magical beasts didn't bother him. As they went further in, the magical beasts grew more concentrated. Some of them were extremely tense, making it so Long Chen had to carefully bypass them. He found that the further he went, the stronger the auras of the magical beasts grew. However, the stronger they were, the better their temper was. Perhaps it was because they were so strong that they viewed the two of them as ants. So they weren't wary when they passed by. Both of them quickly arrived at the circular mountain. There was no longer any way forward unless they crawled on top of the bodies of the magical beasts because they were standing side by side. Now what whispered Meng Chi? The two of them didn't dare to fly here. If they were in the air and those magical beasts attacked, they wouldn't have a chance to dodge. But while they were on the ground, these magical beasts seemed to be restraining each other and wouldn't easily attack. There's a silver horn bull over there. That kind of magical beast has a slightly better temper. Maybe we can test going over with it. Long Chen pulled Meng Chi past a black gorilla to the bull. The silver horn bull's horn was gigantic and flickered with divine light. It seemed to be absorbing something through that horn. Long Chen and Meng Chi quietly climbed up its body. The silver horn bull didn't react at all. Standing on top of its head, they looked inside the circular mountain. 
This was actually a giant volcano, and there was dense immortal mist covering it. An endless flow of life energy flowed out of it. Just taking a breath here would fully refresh someone. These magical beasts were all quietly lying here in meditation, greedily absorbing the immortal mist flowing out of the volcano. Unfortunately, the mist blocked their sight as well as their divine sense. They couldn't see the situation within. Let's go down. Long Chen carefully slid down the silver horn bull's ear. Suddenly, its giant eye slowly opened, making Men Chi jump. However, after looking around, it lazily closed its eyes again. It had clearly noticed them yet didn't care. Seeing Long Chen continue sliding out as if nothing had happened, Men Chi sighed. It took big guts to follow Long Chen in his adventuring. Anyone with a weak heart would have been frightened to death. Not good. Long Chen and Men Chi suddenly found that they were unable to sustain flight within this region. After sliding off the bull's ear, they couldn't float in the air. They began to involuntarily descend down the volcano. Men Chi covered her mouth so that she didn't scream. They began to fall like two stones. A no flying zone. Long Chen was startled. It was impossible to fly within this volcano. It seemed that there was a special law prohibiting their magical arts. Long Chen grabbed Men Qi's waist and held on tightly as they fell. They quickly entered the mist and became unable to see anything. Even their divine sense was restricted. The two of them felt like they had become ordinary mortals. Long Chen maneuvered so that Men Qi was sitting on his arms, while he stuck a leg out. Once they landed on solid ground, he could cushion their fall so that Men Qi wasn't injured. However, they continued falling for a full incense stick's worth of time without reaching the bottom. The two of them were both astonished. Just how deep was this volcano? Finally, Long Chen felt his foot strike something. He was about to push Men Chi up when he found that it was actually water. What was beneath the immortal mist was actually a pool. They immediately sank into it, unleashing a huge wave. Long Chen did his best to raise Men Chi up and soften the impact. In truth. After going through the Blood Essence Stones upgrade, Men Qi's physical body could not be compared to ordinary soul cultivators. This kind of impact was unable to injure her. The two of them swam up. They looked around and couldn't see the end of this lake. Above them was the immortal mist that blocked their sight to the outside world. This water, Men Qi suddenly looked at the lake in shock. Long Chen also felt it. This water made his pores open naturally and absorbed the spiritual chi in the surroundings. It made him feel relaxed. And there was also a nourishing energy within this lake that cleansed his soul. It's a whole lake of primordial life fluid. How is that possible? exclaimed Meng Chi. Let's find out. Long Chen swam downward. He felt like he had seen something deep within the water when they had fallen in. The water was clear, allowing them to see up to 3,000 meters away. At the bottom, he saw something white, but he didn't know what it was. Finally, after around another incense stick's worth of time, Long Chen managed to see what that white object was. It was actually a giant egg, and it was even larger than a mountain. It was covered in runes and emitted a frightening divine pressure. Men Chi, take a look. Do you recognize this egg? Long Chen sent a spiritual message. Men Chi slowly approached. She was about to touch it when Long Chen's expression suddenly changed. He sensed a terrifying burst of energy, and he pulled Men Chi behind him. The giant egg's runes shook ever so slightly. A wave of light struck Long Chen. The entire lake shook, and huge waves crashed down. Long Chen coughed up a mouthful of blood. He was shocked to find that several bones in his chest had been broken. Although he had helped Men Chi block this attack, Men Chi also suffered feeling like her body was about to be crushed. The two of them exchanged a look, seeing each other's shock. Then they looked at the seemingly innocent egg. It actually knew how to attack. Long Chen gestured at Meng Chi, telling her to get further back. He took out a dragon tooth and stabbed it at the egg. Boom. The egg's runes erupted with power. Long Chen felt like his body was about to explode and a powerful wave sent him flying. Chapter 1842 Strange Altar Translator Born to be Boom Long Chen was directly blown out of the lake. He coughed up a mouthful of blood. Following him was the dragon tooth that he caught. Long Chen, are you alright? Men Chi came charging out of the water, swimming over to his side. Huge waves rocked the lake. 
which pulled the two of them further apart. I'm fine, shouted Long Chen. He quickly recovered. In truth, that attack had almost destroyed his body. Meng Chi, do you know the origins of that egg? How is it so powerful? Asked Long Chen. Those runes on top of it were nothing more than a passive defense, and yet their power was so immense. I've never seen or heard of such an egg. Those runes on top of it aren't recorded in any of the ancient scriptures that I've read. There wasn't even anything similar to them, said Meng Chi. Even though Meng Chi was a skilled beast tamer, she had never heard of anything like that giant egg. Let's go back. Long Chen once more descended into the water, slowly approaching the egg. This time he saw it clearly. It was truly like a giant mountain. If it weren't for the fact that it was round and smooth, Long Chen might suspect it really was a giant egg-sized mountain. Its body was like jade. The divine runes that had activated just now had calmed back down. The egg looked completely innocent again. Just now, the two of them had been fooled by its outer appearance, resulting in them almost being killed. This time, they were much more careful. They didn't touch it again, instead swimming below it. As they descended, they noticed eight giant chains binding the egg. These eight chains were 30 meters thick and had blood-colored runes on them. They emitted a fierce aura, like they were the bones of a devil. The eight chains had astonishing blood chi fluctuations coming from them. As for where the chains were coming from, there was no way to tell. They stretched far beyond where they could see. What is going on? Is it absorbing the egg's energy? Asked Long Chen. No, they're not absorbing the egg's energy. It's the egg that is absorbing some kind of mysterious bloodline energy from the eight chains. These fluctuations are terrifying, said Meng Chi. Neither Long Chen nor Meng Chi could figure out what this egg was. They carefully went around the chains, continuing downward. Finally, they saw that beneath the egg was actually a giant altar. The altar was so large that the giant egg was resting on top of it steadily. As expected, none of this is natural Long Chen and Meng Chi exchanged a glance. The Yun Yang world was filled with oddities. Long Chen and Meng Chi already suspected that the nest they had come across had been arranged by someone to nourish those three things. Now there was this mysterious pool with a giant egg and altar within. Just who had created all this? And what was their goal? Suddenly, Long Chen thought of the mysterious coffin he had come across in Devil Spirit Mountain with Chang Hao and Bao Buping. Inside had been a sleeping man. There's an image here. Meng Qi's message interrupted Long Chen's thought process. Long Chen looked where Meng Qi was pointing. There was a giant carving on the lower portion of the altar. It was just that it was so big, and they were too close to see what it was. When they backed up a bit, they saw it was an image of a wolf. A giant wolf looked up at the stars in the quiet night. Behind it was a full moon. It was a very simple stone carving, but when he saw it, an image of that terrifying wolf appeared in Long Chen's mind. It was staring right at him. Careful. Long Chen suddenly heard Meng Chi shout into his ear, and he woke up from his stupor. He was shocked to find that at some point, he had walked right over to the altar. There was a blood pool at the center of the altar, and this blood pool also had a band connecting it to the bottom of the egg. It looked almost like a baby's umbilical cord. It was a startling and frightening sight. This image doesn't have a formation on it, but just the will carved into it is able to make people form an urge to sacrifice themselves to the blood pool, said Meng Chi, her face pale. As a soul cultivator, Meng Chi had reacted quicker than Long Chen. The two of them had both been drawn over to the altar. Looking at the blood pool, they shivered. It seems this egg is the young of a wolf race. It's just that we don't know which race, said Meng Chi. Do wolves give birth to eggs? Long Chen looked at her, dumbfounded. Fool, what wolf would have eggs? Don't you see that umbilical cord leading from the blood pool to the egg? Clearly, the wolf fetus was inserted into the egg, while the blood pool should be the mother's blood. As for the eight chains and the lake water, including the immortal mist at the top, they should all have been prepared to incubate this giant egg, said Meng Chi. Meng Chi, are you saying? Long Chen's eyes suddenly lit up. At the same time, Meng Qi's eyes also brightened. She knew what he was thinking. Will it work? Meng Qi knew that Long Chen wanted to merge Little Snow's crystal core into the egg so that Little Snow could seize the body of the embryo inside. I don't know either, but I want to try it. Long Chen couldn't suppress his own heartbeats. 
the life form inside this giant egg definitely had a terrifying origin. If Little Snow could take control of it, no one would be able to know just how powerful it would become. Meng Chi, I'll use my own essence blood to form a blood rune, but my control over my spiritual strength isn't tight enough. Help me out. The first thing we should do is take a look at what's inside. All right. Meng Chi nodded. Long Chen paused for a moment to calm himself down. Then the space between his eyebrows split open, and his purest essence blood condensed into a dragon-shaped rune. This rune contained his chi, his essence, and his spirit. Seeing him do this, Men Chi formed consecutive hand seals, summoning one spiritual rune after another that stuck itself to the essence blood. Both of them were solemn. They didn't dare to be the slightest bit careless. The blood rune slowly entered the blood pool. When it approached the blood pool, as Long Chen had expected, a powerful suction force drew it in. A sharp pang of pain stabbed Long Chen's head, but he bore the pain with gritted teeth. His divine sense continued to stick to the blood rune. This was definitely extremely dangerous. Long Chen was having his own mind enter the blood pool, and through there, enter the giant egg. His spiritual strength clung stubbornly to his essence blood. Suddenly, a fierce howl rang out in his mind, and his whole body shook. That was a howl that could shatter stars. It was something that should never exist in this world. Blood poured out of his nose, eyes, ears, and mouth. Long Chen, I'm fine. Continue. That terrifying howl seemed to want to shatter his soul. He knew that this was the leftover will of the owner of the essence blood in the pool. It wasn't targeting him but just this leftover will was enough to almost shatter his soul. Long Chen was unable to imagine just what kind of existence the master of this pool had been. After a while, before his essence blood had even fully merged with the blood pool, he felt like his soul was being torn apart. However, he still persevered, protecting the blood rune. Men Qi's own soul was hidden within it, but she couldn't expose herself. Long Chen wanted her to be in charge of examining the changes throughout this process, but his focus was on protecting the blood rune and making sure it didn't dissipate. Originally, Long Chen had been thinking of sneaking his blood rune into the cord connecting the blood pool to the egg, but it was actually automatically sucked over there. My essence blood contains the green dragon's essence blood. The blood pool isn't rejecting it, so as expected. This egg isn't here to just absorb spiritual chi from heaven and earth. It is absorbing other things as well. This had just been a guess. And if it hadn't succeeded, he would have thought of some other way to enter through the eight chains. But it had actually succeeded. His essence blood slowly flowed through the cord. Through his essence blood, he sensed terrifying pressure from all directions that might shatter his essence blood. Fortunately, his spiritual strength was strong enough or this drop of blood would have been crushed at the start. Eventually, his mind shook. He felt like his essence blood was being crushed. His expression changed, and his Yuan spirit appeared as he pushed his spiritual strength to his limit. All right, you can pull back your spiritual strength, shouted Meng Chi. Buzz. Long Chen immediately pulled back his spiritual strength, and in that instant, his blood rune exploded. Long Chen felt the world spinning around him. He almost fainted. Having pulled back his spiritual strength, he had lost his connection to his drop of essence blood. His face was a bit pale, and he had exhausted most of his spiritual strength. Long Chen summoned his divine ring, absorbing the endless energy within this lake water. He rapidly recovered his spiritual strength. How was it? Did you see what was inside? Asked Long Chen urgently. I saw it. Here, Meng Chi pressed a finger against his head and a scene appeared in Long Chen's mind. Chapter 1843 Mysterious Life Form Translator Born to be while Long Chen had opened the path inside, it had been Meng Chi who had managed to see and record the situation inside. While he was confident in his powerful spiritual strength, his technique was not refined enough, and he couldn't be distracted by doing two things at once. Meng Chi's spiritual strength had been protected by Long Chen within the essence blood. Now, she allowed Long Chen to see what she had seen. It was a world of creation, like they really were inside an egg. There were even egg whites and egg yolk. However, the yolk contained a giant figure floating within it. There were nine openings throughout the egg from which chains condensed of blood runes merged into the yolk. 
Long Chen felt like he could see blood flowing within the chains, entering the egg yolk. Of the nine openings, one was connecting the egg to the blood pool, while the other eight were the chains from the lake. The nine openings had an unending flow of energy entering the yolk. The young was 3,000 meters long. It was still an embryo, looking like the young of a dog. It was furless and still not fully opaque, so it was possible to see its giant heart beating. Long Chen realized that the huge pressure he had felt squeezing his essence blood had actually been the result of this heartbeat. Other than the nine main chains, countless translucent chains were sending surges of energy into its body. Although it wasn't even fully developed, the pressure it gave off made Long Chen's hair stand on end. Just what kind of existence is this? It's just an embryo. But the pressure it gives me is even greater than that of the four grand elders. Meng Chi removed her finger, and that image faded. The two of them exchanged a glance, both seeing each other's shock. The existence within this mysterious egg was absolutely terrifying. Should we still continue? Asked Meng Chi. This egg probably related to heaven shaking secrets. Who could predict the consequences of getting involved? Yes, we're going through with it. The embryo still hasn't formed a consciousness, so little Snow's soul should be able to easily take control, said Long Chen. This opportunity was not one he could pass up, but before we go through with it, we need to rest. I used up a great deal of my spiritual strength and essence blood. We only have one chance to send little Snow's crystal core in, so we have to be in peak condition. This time, there could be no mistakes. If Little Snow's crystal core was destroyed during the process, it would completely vanish from this world. Six hours later, Long Chen and Meng Chi finally approached the egg again. Long Chen now gathered a fist-sized sphere of his essence blood. This was his purest essence blood, and taking out so much of it made him pale. Meng Chi looked at him with worry, but she didn't say anything. Opening her hand, a fiery red crystal core floated in front of Long Chen. This was Little Snow's crystal core. It had been nourished by the myriad spirit diagram this entire time. It was now much smaller than before but contained great power. Little Snow, we'll have to take a risk this time. If it works, we'll never have to part again. Long Chen gently kissed Little Snow's crystal core. The crystal core brightened slightly as if responding to him. He knew that Little Snow's will and memories were locked within the crystal core. Back when the Eastern Wasteland Bell had sealed Little Snow's soul inside the crystal core, it had said that Little Snow's soul would enter a kind of hibernation. Little Snow, we'll be able to fight alongside each other again soon. Long Chen hardened his heart, wrapping the crystal core with his essence blood. He slowly sent it toward the blood pool. Meng Chi was also completely focused, her arms tightly wrapped around Long Chen's back. Her spiritual strength was helping Long Chen endure this difficult process. They didn't know if it was because of the previous experience, but the blood pool didn't reject his essence blood. It directly absorbed and channeled it into the egg. Once inside the egg, that terrifying heartbeat rang out once more. It was like divine thunder, shaking Long Chen's soul. Fortunately, he had Meng Chi helping him share the burden this time, so it wasn't as bad as before. He slowly sent Little Snow's crystal core over to the embryo. The closer it got, the more dangerous he felt that life form to be. Long Chen almost started to regret it. He felt that he had been too decisive this time. Could such a terrifying life form really be taken over by Little Snow? It felt like it could wipe away Little Snow's soul with a single thought. However, the arrow had been loosed from its bow now. There was no turning back now. Having his essence blood enter had been difficult, but pulling it out was impossible. Long Chen, Little Snow wouldn't be able to take over this kind of existence. It would be better to have Little Snow merge with it. That way, this pure soul will have Little Snow's memories, and there will be two souls inside it. But Little Snow's soul will have the dominant position. Little Snow will still be Little Snow. Transmitted Meng Chi. We can only do this. Long Chen nodded. If Little Snow tried to take over, it would activate this life form's automatic self-protective measures. Little Snow would be destroyed. This life form's soul was currently a blank piece of paper. Having Little Snow's soul merge with it was actually no different from taking over it. The main difference was just that it was safer. Little Snow's crystal core slowly landed where that life form's head was. 
The crystal core opened, and bursts of spiritual strength began to merge into that life form. Long Chen and Men Qi's hearts tightened. If that life form reacted, Little Snow would be destroyed. Fortunately, the life form didn't react. It continued to lay there in slumber. Finally, two hours passed, and Little Snow's spiritual fluctuations vanished. The crystal core fractured and transformed into powder. The entire egg shook ever so slightly, and the life form also quivered for a moment. That embryonic dog actually opened its eyes. It made a sound. When Long Chen heard it, tears overflowed his eyes. That sound, those spiritual fluctuations, they were familiar. Little Snow had succeeded and was saying hello. However, just a short moment later, it couldn't keep its eyes open any longer. It once more fell into slumber. Its two claws seemed to wave as if it didn't want to sleep, but it couldn't resist the call of slumber. Success. Both Long Chen and Meng Chi opened their eyes. Tears overflowing. They had succeeded. Little Snow would be revived. Meng Chi hugged Long Chen tightly. She knew this had been a constant scar in Long Chen's heart. For Long Chen, Little Snow had chosen to sacrifice itself by taking a curse. That had been Little Snow's choice. Unable to advance any further, Little Snow hadn't wanted to hold Long Chen back, so it had chosen a dignified way to die. Ever since Little Snow died, Long Chen was rarely happy. Although things had improved afterward, he had never forgotten about it. Now that Little Snow had merged with this life form, when it hatched, it would definitely be an incomparably terrifying existence. Most importantly, it would retain Little Snow's memories. Little Snow would still be Little Snow, Long Chen's closest companion. It took a long time for them to calm down from their joy. Long Chen slowly approached the egg. However, he couldn't get too close before Rune suddenly appeared on the egg. This egg was protected. Fortunately, the life form inside it is also from a wolf race. Little Snow won't change too much, said Meng Chi. Yes, if it was a serpent or a centipede, I wouldn't let Little Snow merge with it. Long Chen also smiled. It felt like a curse had been lifted. He felt more relaxed than he had in a long time, and his smile was brighter. Long Chen suddenly felt filled with confidence toward the future. Now we should consider how to leave here, said Meng Chi. This was a no-flying zone, and their magical arts were suppressed. Leaving was definitely a big problem. It shouldn't be too difficult. If we follow one of the chains, perhaps we'll find a way out said Long Chen. The two of them swam up. Long Chen had Meng Chi choose a chain. She was curious why Long Chen didn't pick one himself, but he merely said that his luck wasn't good. Following that chain, they finally reached the edge of the lake. Originally, Long Chen had been planning on taking some of the water here. This water was capable of cleansing the soul and tempering the body. Most importantly, it possessed a trace of divine energy. However, he decided against it. This water, this entire place, they were all prepared for the egg. If Little Snow needed the water, it would be bad for him to take it. Following the chain, they found that it stabbed into the cliff side. The path came to an end. All right, let's climb. Here, I'll carry you. Long Chen smiled and squatted. Meng Chi also smiled faintly. She wrapped her arms around Long Chen's neck tightly from behind. It seemed that it had been a long time since she had been in such intimate contact with Long Chen. Hold on tightly. Don't fall off. Long Chen took a deep breath. Using two sharp daggers, he repeatedly stabbed them into the cliffside and used them as handholds to climb up. Chapter 1844 Silver Wing Horned Eagle Translator Born to be although the loss here restricted their flying, that didn't affect Long Chen's power. Stabbing a dagger into the cliff. He fiercely pulled, sending him hundreds of meters into the air. This was fast, but he had to be careful. The cliffside was bare and uneven, and the immortal mist blocked his sight. If he went too fast, he might crash into a protrusion from the cliffside. He wasn't worried for himself, but he'd be distressed if Meng Chi was injured. Meng Chi was holding on tightly, smiling. Her soul was linked to Long Chen's and she could feel what he was thinking. Long Chen was oftentimes a fool, yet he was always gentle with her. Sometimes happiness was just that simple. Having a person to be concerned about and having a person constantly within one's heart, even if it was in a dangerous situation, could make you feel blessed. 
That made her think of what Long Chen had said before. As long as she was present, even hell could feel like a wonderland. After climbing for the better part of a day, the mist finally became sparse. Long Chen could see the clear sky again. They had reached the opening. Long Chen, do you think those magical beasts will attack us now? If they do, we'll have to fall back down. That really is a possibility the two of them were soaked in the lake water and infected by its aura. This immortal mist was a treasure to these magical beasts. And if they went up, there was no guarantee the magical beasts would ignore them like before. Actually, falling from an attack wasn't the worst case scenario. More likely, they wouldn't even have a chance to fall. If these terrifying 12th rank magical beasts were to attack, they probably wouldn't survive. Don't worry, I have a method. Long Chen suddenly began to climb left and right. What are you looking for? Do you need my help? No need. He. I've already found it. Long Chen began to climb at an angle. They quickly arrived at a cave. Meng Chi saw another cave entrance further away. Then looking around, she saw there were many similar openings all around. This is. Do you remember those magical beasts in the mountain range that weren't moving? There's a hole beneath them. I feel like these caves are part of the natural terrain that leads here. But that snow wolf up there was too stingy to let us through. Each of these caves should let out to one of those openings. We can randomly pick one instead of taking the risk of climbing out here. The two of them entered the cave. However, upon entering, they found that this cave wasn't naturally made. It seemed to have been dug by some unknown magical beast. It seems some magical beasts good at digging holes began to dig their way over to the volcano to steal the spiritual chi. But before they could benefit, they were kicked out. Long Chen shook his head with a sigh. Meng Chi nodded. This guess was very likely. The magical beasts that they had crossed on the way here didn't look like the kind that could dig holes like this. Why don't we see those magical beasts' corpses? Muttered Meng Chi to herself. Ah, they must have been drawn over by the altar. Their spiritual strength wasn't strong enough to resist its lure. And they became sacrifices to the blood pool. According to reason, there was no way this many magical beasts could just obediently lay there. A few must have tested to see if they could snatch the treasure. However, Long Chen and Meng Chi hadn't seen a single magical beast down there, not even a corpse. When they factored in the blood pool at the middle of the altar that lay at the bottom of the lake, it made sense. These magical beasts wouldn't be able to resist its pull. Even Meng Chi and Long Chen had almost sacrificed themselves. It seems the existence Little Snow has merged with has a very amazing origin. All kinds of energy are being sent to it as nourishment Long Chen had never seen such a giant investment. To place a terrifying life forms young into an egg and then send all kinds of energy to nourish it. Just what kind of life form was worth such an investment? Don't worry about it. Now that its soul has merged with Little Snow, they are one. No matter how terrifying its origin, it is still Little Snow. Little Snow will become our strongest support in the future, comforted Meng Chi. Meng Chi knew that Long Chen was starting to worry. He cared too much about Little Snow and was afraid of some accident occurring. He was afraid of Little Snow no longer recognizing him in the future. The path was completely straight, and they went along it without an accident for an hour before seeing the end. Based on how far they had gone, they guessed that it should be the outer edge of this region. There's a feather. It's a bird magical beast up above, said Long Chen upon seeing a giant feather on the ground. It was very beautiful, looking as if it had been made entirely out of silver. It looked like an ornament made by a silver craftsman. It's the silver wing horned eagle. It's a comparatively more gentle beast. As long as we don't show any hostility, it normally wouldn't attack us, said Meng Chi. Although the silver wing horned eagle was also a magical beast, other than hunting, it rarely killed. It wasn't as fierce as other magical beasts. Magical beasts were naturally ferocious and tyrannical. Even if it wasn't to eat, they normally liked killing. Even if you didn't provoke them, they would still kill weaker magical beasts instinctively. Compared to average magical beasts, the silver wing horned eagle was much gentler. Unless it felt threatened, it normally wouldn't attack. So upon seeing its feather, Meng Chi sighed with relief. They continued onward, and the path began to go up. They quickly saw a silver ceiling, just like the other magical beast. 
The silver wing horned eagle was using its own body to block the exit, absorbing the sparse aura coming out of it. Long Chen pulled Meng Chi over. At this moment, he realized that the no-flight law had vanished at some point. They were no longer restricted. Long Chen pushed open a small space for Meng Chi, and the two of them charged out from a gap between the silver wing horned eagle's giant feathers. Past the silver feathers, Long Chen finally saw the sky again, the sun. He took a deep breath of relief. Just at this moment, a silver head turned toward them. Two tufts of down stood high on its forehead, looking like two high horns. This was naturally the origin of the name of the silver wing horned eagle. Magical beasts were different from Xuan beasts. Their bloodlines were inferior, and their intelligence was extremely low. They couldn't control themselves. Humans gave them names based on their appearances or divine abilities. At this time, the silver wing horned eagle was staring at Long Chen and Meng Chi coldly. Even its eyes contained a silver glint to them. They were like two sharp swords. Meng Chi, didn't you say that the silver wing horned eagle's temper is very good? Why don't I feel the same way? Long Chen hair rose. He found that the silver wing horned eagle had formed a killing intent toward the two of them. Suddenly, two rays of light shot out of its eyes, shooting straight toward them. Long Chen dodged, pulling Meng Chi with him. That silver light shot into the distance piercing a distant mountain. Not good. We've been in the lake water for too long. It smells us and wants to eat us, exclaimed Meng Chi. As a beast tamer, it was easier for her to sense the emotions in a magical beast's spiritual fluctuations. Meng Chi, Cloud is in seclusion, so you need a powerful houseboat. I feel like this silver wing horned eagle is decent. I'll give it to you as a gift. Long Chen looked around and saw that since they were on the outer edge, the magical beasts weren't as concentrated. His divine ring appeared behind him, and Evil Moon appeared in his hand. A saber image slashed toward the silver wing horned eagle. The silver wing horned eagle didn't dodge, and its body didn't even move. A giant beak pierced toward the saber image. Long Chen smiled coldly. Just as his saber was about to land, five stars lit up in Long Chen's eyes, and a powerful pressure descended. Boom. Long Chen's power increased by 10 times. As a result, Evil Moon smashed hard onto the Silver Wing Horned Eagle's beak. The immense power sent it flying. The Silver Wing Horned Eagle had clearly viewed the two of them as nothing more than ants, so it was too lazy to even move its body. As a result, Long Chen's sudden increase in power caught it off guard. After sending it flying, a golden dragon tooth appeared in the sky, striking the Silver Wing Horned Eagle's head. Blood splashed. The dragon tooth pierced through the silver wing horned eagle's skin, causing its blood to spurt out like spring water. In that instant, the silver wing horned eagle no longer dared to move. The dragon tooth was touching its crystal core. As long as the dragon tooth pressed forward ever so slightly, it would lose its life. Although the silver wing horned eagle was a 12th rank magical beast with great power, its low intelligence made it unable to take advantage of its immense power. Its life was now in Long Chen's hands. It knelt on the ground. As the dragon tooth was keeping its head pressed down, it didn't dare to move. Magical beasts are just beasts. They have great power but don't know how to use it properly. Long Chen shook his head. Meng Chi was greatly shocked. She hadn't expected Long Chen to be so powerful. He was able to so easily subdue a 12th rank magical beast. Give it the slave mark. It won't dare to resist said Long Chen. Chapter 1845 Return to Yourself Translator Born to be only with Long Chen's reminder did Meng Chi react. She formed hand seals, and a giant slave mark slowly flew over to the silver wing horned eagle. Its body shuddered. Its instincts told it to run, but Long Chen made the dragon tooth light up, causing it to lose its will to flee. Meng Chi's slave mark was like a net, slowly wrapping around the crystal core. However, just as it was fully wrapped and the slave mark was about to take effect, it exploded. Meng Chi tried again, but even after three tries, she couldn't succeed. It's no good. My cultivation base is too low. I can't control a 12th rank magical beast soul. Even if it doesn't resist, I can't place a slave mark. Try again with my essence blood. Long Chen sent a drop of his essence blood over to Meng Chi. Meng Chi then sent it into her slave mark. It once more wrapped around the crystal core. It shuddered. But at that moment, 
a dragon roar came from within the slave mark. The silver wing horned eagle's body trembled intensely. The slave mark lit up and finally took effect, branding itself on the crystal core. It worked men she was so delighted that she clapped her hands. She actually had a 12th rank magical beast as a husband. Long Chen pulled the dragon tooth out. He smiled, not expecting this. Originally, he had been prepared to unleash his full power, but he had actually subdued it in one move thanks to its carelessness. Even he was surprised. Is it because of Men Qi's character? If that's the case, isn't it bullying? Why was it that other people's luck was so good? While if he wanted to obtain something for himself, he would always run into countless difficulties and then end up with nothing? The difference between two people was truly great. Long Chen looked at the excited Men Qi who was already using her spiritual strength to placate the silver wing horned eagle. He was speechless. When would he get such good luck? However, luck wasn't reliable. Long Chen found that the disturbance over here had drawn the attention of quite a few magical beasts. There are no problems, right? Asked Long Chen, a bit uneasy. If the slave mark was too loose, Men Qi would be in danger. No problems at all. The slave mark is already embedded deep within its soul, and it's very secure. Long Chen, thank you. Just now, you really were handsome. Men Qi looked at Long Chen worshipfully. In one easy move, he had subdued a powerful 12th rank magical beast. From the moment he said that he would be giving her it as a gift, it had been less than a breath's time. Seeing her worshipful appearance, Long Chen finally comprehended why Guo Ran liked being a poser so much. Being worshipped like this truly felt good. To tell the truth, this is your luck. If I was trying to catch my own husband, it definitely wouldn't have gone so smoothly. In the end, Long Chen told the truth about this accomplishment. Men Qi smiled faintly. I wasn't talking about the result. I was talking about your confidence. That's already handsome enough. I knew that even if you didn't rely on luck, you would succeed either way. Men Qi knew that Long Chen never relied on luck to live. His accomplishments were created through himself and his power. So he wouldn't lightly promise anything. But once he did, he would be 100% confident in doing it. This confidence of his was especially charming. What are you talking about? Asked Long Chen. I said you were handsome and didn't rely on you. Fool. Stop messing around. Men Qi suddenly realized Long Chen was just acting like he hadn't heard her to get more compliments. Ah, your praise is just so great that I want to hear more. I'll only blush if you praise me more. Laughed Long Chen. HMPH, what about the praise from the pill fairy and fairy Zi Yan? Only then would your face show an opening, said Men Qi. When Men Qi brought up the pill fairy and Zi Yan, Long Chen couldn't help being embarrassed. Do you see your current expression? What? Are you finally embarrassed? That's not your style, said Men Qi with a smile. Embarrassed? Me? I'm incapable of learning that skill. My one good point is my thick skin. It's just that the Pill Fairy and Zi Yan are people I don't know how to face. I don't know if one day my hands will be stained with their blood. The Pill Fairy's father was the master of Pill Valley, Yu Ziaoyan. Yu Ziaoyan was currently causing a disturbance, drawing all the large powers to target the Martial Heaven Alliance. Pill Valley had long since started breaking off dealings with the Martial Heaven Alliance. From a long time ago, they had reduced the number of medicinal pills they would sell to the Martial Heaven Alliance. Now, they refused to sell them even a single pill. The Martial Heaven Alliance could only rely on its own stockpiles of pills as well as the Huaian sect. This was another reason why many sects were leaning toward Pill Valley rather than sticking with the Martial Heaven Alliance. Long Chen, you're overthinking it. Have you already forgotten what you said back then? I heard it straight from Wan Er, said Meng Chi her lips curling. What did I say? Wan Er said that she asked you about your dreams. Didn't you say that your dream was to become an accomplished, meaningful, and improved big scoundrel? Men Chi looked at him with a teasing light in her eyes. But right now, you no longer have that appearance of the scoundrel from the eastern wastelands. You are starting to grow more and more unlike yourself. I remember when you were so evil that you would do anything. But now you're so careful and you try to make plans that end up failing and bringing even greater trouble. Didn't you often say that if life and death are up to the will of the heavens, 
you would snatch your own fate from the heavens? Just how grand were you back then? But as you pick up more and more burdens, you can't release them. Sooner or later they'll crush you. Becoming serious, Menchi asked. Do you know why I, Wanur, Zhikyu, Chu Yao, and Xiaokian all like you? Isn't it because I like courting death? Said Long Chen awkwardly Noveloon.com Menchi smiled. You could put it that way. It's that wild nature of yours that no one can control. Perhaps there won't be a good ending for us by following you, but the process will definitely be marvelous. Life is like a dream, and death is the end of the dream. Other than immortals and gods, no one can escape death. We like you so much that we are willing to share you, treating each other like sisters. It's all for the future. Having decided to follow you, we don't expect to have any smooth and steady days. We're prepared to be destroyed along with you one day. So each of our days together is incredibly precious. A blessing. The Dragonblood Warriors feel the same way. They've given their lives to you. We aren't following you to live longer, but to live a brilliant life following an unrivaled hero. Even if it's just the explosion of a firework, the flash of a shooting star, that one moment of brilliance is truly living. A cultivator hopes to shine, not for a hundred years but to shine as bright as possible, to leave their mark in history. So long Chen, don't think too much about it. Little Snow's revival is just a matter of time. Lay this burden down and relax. Return to your old self. That wild and unruly Long Chen that was like a battle god. It's time for him to come back. Return to your old self. These five words rang out like thunder in Long Chen's ears. His mental realm instantly became clear. He looked at his current self then thought of when he had left the Phoenix Cry Empire. His heart had changed from that high-spirited time. What was he afraid of? The worst case was only death. Even if he died, he would release his own light, expressing his unbending will to the world, releasing his furious roar. Thank you, Meng Chi. You really are my good wife. Starting today, I, Long Chen, am reviving. Fuck. Rookies on the Martial Heaven continent. Get ready to tremble. Long Chen suddenly let out a heaven-shaking roar. His domineering voice shook the land. It was full of arrogance, of wildness, the roar of the great pen that hated the heavens for being too low. Men Chi looked at him with tears in her eyes. She knew that Long Chen had endured far too many things. He had many things to be bitter about, but he kept that bitterness inside, not letting others see it. All she could do was help Long Chen share his burden, seeing him look like he had been freed from a curse. She had an urge to cry. Following Long Chen's roar, dozens of other voices responded. Clearly, he had started the surrounding magical beasts. They viewed his roar as a provocation. Powerful auras began to rise. Hey, don't misunderstand. I was just testing my throat. You guys can sing amongst yourselves. Long Chen jumped onto the silver wing horned eagle with Men Chi. Was this a joke? If they were besieged by dozens of 12th rank magical beasts. What would they do? They flew away, leaving behind only Menki's tinkling laughter. Chapter 1846 Defung and the Three Great Corrupt Kings Translator Born to be a Menchi, if you look at me like this, I'll get embarrassed. Long Chen and Menchi were both sitting on the silver wing horned eagle's back. Long Chen was a bit embarrassed. Menchi was looking at him with a teasing smile. Just now, his appearance had made her laugh a long time. Your face has finally turned red, laughed Meng Chi. Long Chen rubbed his fiery face, sighing. It seems I still haven't cultivated enough. I need to bitterly cultivate in the future so that I can learn Mo Nian's shameless ability. Speaking of Mo Nian, I heard that he had entered the Yin Yang world and immediately had an intense fight with the ancient family alliance's peak genius, Di Fang. It's said that both sides were injured and have retreated, said Meng Chi. Di Fang? Who's that? I've never heard of him, but it sounds familiar, said Long Chen. You might not know Di Feng, but you know Di Xin. That Di Feng is Di Xin's big brother. Really? How do you know that? Long Chen was startled. He supposed Di Long had some skill to be so useless yet still have two sons. I only learned of it from a soul sark when I killed an ancient race expert. That ancient race expert was sent in along with you, said Meng Chi. When Meng Chi had left the Dragonblood Legion to search for her own treasures, she had ended up being blocked by an expert from the ancient races. 
That expert was extremely powerful, but his luck was bad. Men Chi had found an opening in his soul protecting item, and she had also had Cloud. With the two of them attacking, they had quickly defeated him. Once defeated, trying to get away in front of Cloud was a joke. He was slain, and his Yuan spirit was devoured by Cloud. So Men Chi had managed to piece together a few memories from his Yuan spirit. Through his memories, Men Chi learned that Di Long actually had another son named Di Fang. That person was very mysterious, and very few people knew of him even within the ancient family alliance. However, for the opening of the Yun Yang world, this Di Fang had come out, using the status of the ancient family alliance's top genius to enter. Di Fang had just entered when he encountered Mo Nian. As Mo Nian was the number one wanted criminal of the ancient family alliance, they had fought an immense battle. As for that expert that Men Chi had slain, he had rushed over to the battlefield but had come too late. By the time he arrived, the two had finished and were slinking away, injured. He had tried to block Mo Nian, but Mo Nian had used a single arrow to shake his soul. His Yuan spirit had almost shattered, so he had fled. That Di Feng really is bizarre. How could Di Long keep one of his son's secret for so long, while leaving the other to roam around brazenly, doing whatever he wants? Based on that person's memories, Di Feng is older and has a different mother. Such a person should be even more famous than Di Xin. But Di Long kept quiet to the point that the outside world didn't even know of him. He only reveals himself now that Di Xin is killed and the Yun Yang world is open. What could his goal be? It truly has a strange scent to it. The ancient family alliance is in chaos thanks to Mo Nian, while Di Xin's death caused their people's hearts to become unsteady. For Di Long to send out Di Feng now, don't you think it's to make Di Feng the leader of the ancient family alliance and have him become the leader of the junior generation? After all, for a savior to appear amongst the ancient family alliance's disciples at this chaotic time will cause them to unite and support him. Guest Meng Chi, that's definitely a reasonable guess but I feel like there's something different about this. Think about it. Although Di Xin was extremely talented, he was an idiot. Shen Bijin was able to string him along easily. As the leader of the ancient family alliance, Di Long wouldn't raise such an idiot as his successor, yet he allowed him to act as stupidly as he pleased, even letting him show off his status as the heir to the ancient family alliance. Such a person would sooner or later be killed by someone. I suspect Di Long wanted that son of his to die. Long Chen frowned. But, that's impossible. It does seem impossible. But I feel like Di Long is scheming very deeply. It seems like I'm being used by him. I didn't feel it so clearly before. But now that this Di Feng has appeared out of nowhere, I feel like this is a gambit that he arranged. I killed Di Xin, causing his mother to break her ties with Di Long. It seems she ran back to her family to complain and her family has a shocking origin. Did Di Long sacrifice Di Xin to make his wife crazy? But why? To borrow her family to target the Martial Heaven Alliance? Would that really be worth the price of losing a son? Could it be that Di Long doesn't get along with his wife? Did his wife give him a green hat? Was Di Xin not his son? Oh, it seems Di Xin really doesn't look that similar to Di Long. Long Chen's eyes suddenly lit up. All right, stop randomly guessing. Your imagination is crazy. Meng Chi shook her head. The main question is how strong Di Feng is. I wish I had managed to see that fight. If he could fight evenly with Mo Nian, then he's definitely a monster. At the very least, he's on the same level as Zi Luo and true immortal Jiaoki. You have such a high opinion of Mo Nian? When he left the Eastern Wastelands, he was just an ordinary rank one celestial, said Meng Chi. He, we created miracles so others can as well. Just think about what kind of person Mo Nian is. Despite being a constant poser, he hasn't been killed. He's besieged during the day and digging up tombs at night. I don't even know how many people want to kill him, but he's still living happily. If he doesn't have the power of someone on that level, he would have long since been buried himself. The fact that Mo Nian could live to this point is no coincidence. Furthermore, his origins aren't as simple as I thought. Grand Elder Yan Nanshan said that the original leader of the ancient family alliance isn't the Di family but the Mo family. That Mo family is most likely Mo Nian's family. 
One reason Di Feng suddenly appeared might also be to target Mo Nian, or more accurately, to participate in the battle between the Di family and the Mo family, but they can scheme as they please. Starting today, I'll give my head a good rest. In the future, no matter what trouble I encounter, the only thing to do will be to kill, said Long Chen, clenching his fists. Last time, he had tried to trick his opponents with a ploy, only to almost get killed without getting a chance to release all his power. He didn't want that nonsense to occur again. He wanted to go back to his old style. Meng Chi saw that Long Chen truly had recovered his old, sharp high spirits. It was like he had returned to his youth, a time that was unsteady and immature yet filled with liveliness and dreams. As the silver-winged horned eagle continued flying, they encountered experts time and time again. Long Chen would always go exchange maps with them. Of course, sometimes they would encounter corrupt experts, and that made it even simpler. He would directly kill them and perform a soul sark. On the way, they ended up encountering one tough person from the corrupt path. Before Long Chen could attack, the silver winged horned eagle unleashed a ray of silver light from its eyes. That corrupt expert had been a very powerful Empyrean, but despite going all out, he was blown to smithereens. Even his divine item was destroyed. That made Long Chen jump in shock. Inside, he patted himself on the back. Fortunately, the silver winged horned eagle had been careless back then, or truly defeating it would probably have come at a great price. That person from the corrupt path had definitely been an elite. He had most likely entered in the same group as Ziluo. Yet, even such a figure was unable to receive an attack from the silver winged horned eagle. Its power was even greater than Long Chen had estimated. The three great corrupt kings. When Men Chi did a soul sark of that expert, her expression changed. Amongst the corrupt experts, many of their memories were sealed with restrictions. However, from this person, she learned a shocking piece of news. This time, the corrupt path had sent in the three corrupt kings. Ziluo was actually only one of those three. Ziluo came from the heavenly evil sect. Their sect master was Zi Wentian, the corrupt path's leader. Other than the heavenly evil sect, the corrupt path had two other giant sects with great power. One was the ghost king sect, while the other was the underworld abode. Although she could only get a few memories from that person's soul. She learned the names of those peak experts. There was Ziluo from the Heavenly Evil Sect, Gui Ken from the Ghost King Sect, and two experts from the Underworld Abode, one of whom was called Miang Jie. Those three were called the Three Great Corrupt Kings, claimed to be the Corrupt Path's strongest geniuses. As for the other person from the Underworld Abode, it was Long Chen's old acquaintance, the Devil Empress Len Yuian. Many of this person's memories were sealed. He had clearly known many of the corrupt path secrets, so there were even more seals. Other than those names, there was no other information of value. Even their appearance was blocked, let alone their cultivation bases or power. What do you think? Meng Chi looked at Long Chen. Chapter 1847 Corrupt King Miang Jie Translator Born to be nothing much. It's just the names of more people I'll have to kill. Long Chen shrugged. He was too lazy to even remember their names. Since he had determined his cultivation path, he would just charge down it. Now he knew why the heaven-splitting battle sect was always so straightforward and direct. Before this, he hadn't quite understood how their disciples could be living so simply and happily without thinking about anything. However, now he knew that this was a kind of cultivation attitude. It was also a kind of wisdom toward life. But only today did Long Chen fully understand it. I was talking about Len Yuian. If you face each other, what will you do? Asked Men Chi. That won't happen. She has promised not to target me any longer. Said Long Chen. Len Yuian was an extremely proud figure. She had said that she would no longer hunt him down. So she definitely wouldn't. She would also not target the people beside him. Or she would no longer be Len Yuian. Then when the battle between the righteous and corrupt path erupts, she will just stand to the side as a spectator. No, she just won't raise her blade against me. But there's plenty of other people for her to kill. We'll kill the corrupt path, and she'll kill the righteous path. We just have to stick to our own targets. Why force ourselves to charge toward each other? But, Men Chi was still worried. Len Yuian was too terrifying. 
If they were to face her, most likely in the entire Dragonblood Legion, only Long Chen would be able to stop her. Furthermore, she had once helped them in the spirit world. If they were to really become enemies, would they still be able to kill her mercilessly? Could they really fight all out? There's no need to worry. I understand Len Yuian, and she won't do such a thing. She can be excluded from the list of our enemies, as she will definitely try to avoid us. After all, the Yun Yang world is huge, and we're here to search for treasures. Battle is second. No one wants to start a bitter fight only for others to benefit. But now I know that the monsters of the large powers are no longer able to stay Loki with the opening of the Yun Yang world. Just the corrupt path has the three great corrupt kings and Len Yuian. So the Xuan beasts wouldn't just have true immortal Jiaoki. And the ancient family alliance wouldn't just have Di Fang. The ancient races. Pill Valley. The Blood Kill Hall. Who knows how many monsters of theirs have entered the Yun Yang world now? There are so many monsters that the Devil Slaughter rankings are essentially meaningless. He. Now it will be lively. Long Chen's own attitude had changed. He was no longer worried, and he felt his blood starting to heat up. Fortunately, the Dragonblood Legion had already grown up, and the captains were also monsters. There was no need for him to worry about them. This time, he would release himself. The strong were created through slaughter. Now they should see just who was stronger. Everywhere the silver wing horned eagle passed, the experts around would flee. When Long Chen came down and said that he wanted to exchange maps, they were relieved. They thought that this terrifying 12th rank magical beast was hunting. More and more experts had entered the Yun Yang world, and as everyone exchanged maps, they learned more about the terrain. Of course, some people concealed the best places that they had found. However, Long Chen only exchanged maps with disciples from the Righteous Path, and he first gave them his map. When those disciples saw a map dozens or even over a hundred times greater than their own, they were too ashamed to hide anything. They gave him what they had mapped. Eventually, Long Chen learned some news of the Dragonblood Legion from one of the disciples. That person had been in a mountain range and witnessed the Dragonblood Legion fighting a magical beast. He said that they had slain that magical beast and obtained its young. Quite a few experts had tried to interfere and snatch their gains. But those experts had been slain by the Dragonblood warriors. After that, this disciple left. Long Chen was delighted to hear this news. He had the silver wing horned eagle quicken its pace in that direction. When they arrived, they saw that a fierce battle had been fought here. There were still blood stains on the ground. Based on the fluctuations, that blood belonged to a 12th rank magical beast. There was also a nest on the top of the mountain, which was empty. It's the nest of a blood pattern lion vulture, said Menchi quickly upon examining the surroundings. As a beast tamer, she could tell the master of the nest. Let's go. There that way. Long Chen could easily distinguish the Dragonblood warriors' auras, especially those who had come with him from the eastern wastelands. He found which direction they had gone. I'll put away the silver wing horned eagle. The slave mark is quite a burden at first, and its soul is damaged. It needs to rest. Menki's spiritual strength wrapped around the silver wing horned eagle. Its giant body faded. Long Chen gave Menchi a pile of medicinal pills. Some were spirit awakening pills and soul nourishing pills, and there were all kinds of medicinal pills beneficial to magical beasts. This silver wing horned eagle was currently being controlled through brute power. If it could become a loyal follower, it would be even better. So they had to give it some benefits to make it feel that its new life was better than before, and by a great deal at that. The two of them quickly flew in the direction the Dragonblood Legion had gone. Long Chen was pulling Meng Qi along as lightning covered their bodies. Their speed wasn't lower than the Silver Wing Horned Eagle at all. After rushing for a day, they heard the sound of fighting coming from a distant mountain valley. They also felt a terrifying aura. They immediately rushed over. A powerful Qi wave blew apart the mountain they had just passed. Long Chen waved his hand, blocking the Qi wave and astral winds. Within the valley, there was a man floating in the air, holding a black broadsword. Endless death chi swirled around him, and a pair of black wings was within the manifestation behind him. From the distance, this person looked like a winged fiend, and black chi revolved around him like thousands of coiling black dragons. 
This person's aura was no weaker than Ziluo's. That man was looking down on over 12,000 Dragonblood warriors on the ground of the valley. The Dragonblood warriors were all shining. Runes revolved around their weapons, and there seemed to be faint threads connecting all their weapons into one entity. Guo Ran was in his golden armor, his sabers pointed toward the man. Long Chen saw that Guo Ran's sabers were already damaged. Guo Ran's sabers were only peak ancestral items. The only reason he was able to face that man's divine item was because he was borrowing the power of all the Dragonblood warriors. Otherwise, his saber would have long since exploded. Behind Guo Ran were Gu Yang, Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, and Xia Chen. They stared gravely at the person before Guo Ran. Xia Chen was forming hand seals, prepared to attack at any moment. I've long since heard the Dragonblood Legion's name. I thought you were only capable of crushing the weaklings of the Righteous Path, but you actually do have some skill. Even so, you're just a group of trash. No matter how you gather the power of ants through a formation. Ants will still be ants. Even all their power combined cannot defeat a dragon. Today, I, Ming Jie, will personally annihilate you so that the righteous path stories about the world's number one legion being the bane of the corrupt path can end. Hearing that person's name, Guo Ran and the others' expressions changed. They had also slain some corrupt experts and learned the names of the three great corrupt kings from them. They had been so unlucky as to encounter such a terrifying existence. In their previous clash, they had almost been unable to hold on. Ming Jie smiled coldly and raised his broadsword. Black Chi revolved around it, condensing into a giant black curtain in the sky. The black curtain spread, turning the entire world dark. This darkness contained only death. The previous attack was just 50% of my power. Now I'll show you what absolute power is. In front of this power, the righteous path can only kneel and beg for mercy. Death will be your only option. As Ming Ji's voice resounded through the air, the world seemed to become hell on earth. The entire Dragonblood Legion was locked down by that terrifying broadsword. Fuck. We might not be able to receive this attack. Even if we can, we'll have to pay a price, said Xia Chen darkly. Ming Ji's power was too great. Worst of all, his manifestation sucked away all the heavenly Tao energy in the surroundings, other than the few Empyreans. The others who were only ranked 9 Celestials felt isolated from their heavenly Tao energy. Without that power, they could only rely on their spiritual Yuan to activate their armor and weapons, and that meant their ability to share energy was weakened. This, it seems to be a legendary paragon art, or there wouldn't be such a phenomenon Guo Ran was also gloomy. There was no way to resist such power. Just as Xia Chen said, if they could manage to block it, at least half the Dragonblood warriors would be slain. They couldn't receive it, but there was also no way for them to run. Death is your fate, but you don't need to be afraid. You won't be alone. I'll quickly send Long Chen to hell with you. Meng Jie sneered. His broadsword grew larger until it became a giant crescent moon. Does it feel good to brag so much? Just as Guo Ran and the others were wondering how to face this attack, a lazy and indifferent voice rang out, delighting them. They all looked in the direction of that voice. A bolt of lightning pierced through the air, shattering the black curtain. Light illuminated the world once more, and a figure appeared within the endless lightning. Boss, Guo Ran and all the warriors of the Dragonblood Legion cheered at once. Chapter 1848 A Confrontation of Paragon Arts Translator Born to be wild lightning covered Long Chen, and a pillar of light pierced the sky. The black curtain that had enveloped this world was forcibly torn apart. Following Long Chen's arrival, more and more lightning appeared. Millions of lightning dragons roared through the air. More and more of the black curtain crumbled, and more lightning manifested. The world was torn into two halves, one side filled with lightning and the other with darkness. Long Chen was like a lightning god standing above all deos. Last time, I didn't get a chance to go all out against Ziluo. This time, I'll see just how much power the three great corrupt kings have to dare be so arrogant in front of my Dragonblood Legion. A lightning spear slowly condensed in Long Chen's hands. It was no ordinary lightning spear this time, as it was condensed of countless lightning dragons. As more lightning dragons merged into it, its aura grew more and more powerful. Rumbling rang out that shook the world. Suddenly, 
the lightning vanished. All of it had been sucked into the lightning spear, and the world became quiet, deathly quiet. Miying Jie narrowed his eyes. The current Long Chen with his lightning spear looked like the Grim Reaper with his sickle. Even the heavens didn't dare to release a sound. Most shocking of all, Mi Ji's sword, which had been connected to another world's power to unleash a paragon art, was actually slower than Long Chen. Long Chen was also using a paragon art, but he had completed it almost instantly. Miying Ji's broadsword suddenly shook. He had finally gathered enough energy and then slashed his sword at Long Chen. Underworld King Life Reaping Slash The Black Chi filling the world suddenly vanished, absorbed by his sword in an instant. The huge black crescent moon slashed down at Long Chen. Guo Ran and the others were shocked at the sight of this attack. It was even more terrifying than what they had imagined. With most of their heavenly Tao energy stripped away, only a few of them would have survived this attack. In the face of this powerful attack, Long Chen's battle intent blazed. Wild Lightning Soul Battle Spear. Long Chen's spear left his hand. It flew out like a bolt of lightning. The spear instantly grew explosively, becoming a battle god's spear, causing the void around it to shatter. Each of its millions of runes erupted like a volcano. Boom. The lightning spear crashed into the black crescent moon. The space around them twisted wildly as though the entire world would collapse. Fragments of the void danced. Spastime was destroyed. It was like thousands of years passed in an instant. Guo Ran and the others were in their strongest defensive state but still felt their heads buzzing from the shock waves. Their heads became blank and unable to think. The huge shock waves caused the heavens to collapse, the earth to be torn apart, and the mountains to flatten. This was a clash of paragon arts. A clash between paragon arts was a clash between worlds. When Guo Ran and the others recovered, they saw that everything around them was black. They thought that they had died. However, they quickly realized that they were wrong. They began popping up from underground. Boom. As soon as they came up and saw the light again, everything turned black again. Up in the sky, Long Chen had slashed Evil Moon into Miying Ji's black broadsword, unleashing a sky full of black mist. What the fuck? Guo Ran had just popped out of the ground when he was sent flying by the astral winds of their fight. He tumbled back, even covered in his armor. Although he didn't get injured, the rapid spinning made him almost vomit. With Evil Moon in his hand, Long Chen attacked time and time again, each slash sharper than the last. His divine ring was present, and five stars revolved in his eyes. He wasn't holding back. Miying Jie was forced to retreat as he blocked Long Chen's attacks. Each of Long Chen's attacks was as heavy as a star. That power had long since surpassed the limit of a human. Miying Ji's arms were shaking, and he almost lost hold of his sword. Miying Ji Ye was shocked by Long Chen's power. He was even stronger than the stories. Just now, in the clash of their paragon arts, despite him starting earlier, Long Chen had completed storing up energy first. His cast time was much quicker, but its power was not one whit lower. They were actually evenly matched. Both of them had coughed up three large mouthfuls of blood, with an unknown number of bones broken. However, Meng Jie had a secret art that made his injuries heal in the blink of an eye. He had been about to attack Long Chen while Long Chen was healing, but he found that Long Chen looked fine and was the one to attack him. The black wings in Miang Ji's manifestation were constantly quivering, wrapping him in black chi. So that's the case. Your aura is very similar to the netherworld. As for those wings, they contain the scent of hell. Is your family related to the netherworld's jailers? Asked Long Chen lightly as he continued to attack. Meng Jie couldn't help being shocked. His cultivation technique truly required the chi of the netherworld. When he had advanced to the soul transformation realm, he had started borrowing the netherworld's chi to cultivate, and that pair of wings in his manifestation was called the grasp of hell. Although he only knew its name. None of his family's experts had told him their origin. For Long Chen to suddenly say it, how could he not be shocked? Nonsense. Don't think a single paragon art will allow you to compete against me. You're far too lacking. Miying Ji's manifestation suddenly unleashed a burst of power. Long Chen was forced back several steps, while Miying Ji Ye also took advantage of this to retreat, holding his black sword at a slanted angle. Nine bone-like runes on it slowly lit up. However, just at that moment, 
Miang Ji's expression changed. An invisible wind blade had silently appeared behind him. It suddenly quickened, slashing toward him. Miang Ji's divine sense swept out and found that at some point, the dragon blood legion had gathered together. Standing at the front was Tang Wan Er. Everyone's energy was pouring toward her, and this wind blade was her masterpiece. The wind blade spun rapidly, slicing through space. The current Tang Wan Er had already started awakening her manifestation, and her control over wind energy had reached a terrifying level. Adding on the Dragon Blood Warrior's assistance, Miang Ji Ye would definitely be heavily injured if he was struck. Boom. Without thinking about it, Miang Ji Ye swung his sword at the wind blade. The wind blade exploded, but he felt a strange suction force appear from its explosion, causing his body to become sluggish. At that moment, Evil Moon unleashed a giant black saber image that slashed down. Long Chen's lazy voice rang out. Idiot. Our goal isn't to fight you, but to kill you. Bastard. Raged Miang Ji Ye. He hastily pulled on his broadsword to block. Boom. Although he blocked it, his block was too hasty. As a result, his arms were broken, and he was sent flying. He tasted something sweet as he almost vomited blood. Inside, he was infuriated. Hence, Sword Chi condensed within his sword as he prepared to unleash an attack at Tang Wan Er and the others. However, his body had just stabilized when one beautiful feather after another shot toward him like sharp swords. Each of these feathers contained a sharp aura, with 999 of them shooting at once. Miang Ji's expression changed. Light erupted from his sword as he slashed it repeatedly, forming a layered net that blocked Men Ki's attack. The feathers crashed into the net, unleashing huge ripples in space. Miang Ji's expression changed. Those feathers were extremely tough and when they landed on his net, they didn't break. At most, he only managed to repel them. Just at that moment, the divine light of those feathers vanished. Replacing it, a single silver ray of light pierced toward him. What Miang Ji Ye was stunned, not even having sensed this attack before. There was no time to dodge. Boom. The silver ray of light landed squarely on Miang Ji's body. His body instantly exploded. Ha ha ha. So the corrupt path's three kings are only at this level. Who asked you to show off? Laughed Guo Ran. His laughter had yet to end when the ground exploded, and a figure charged out of the earth, slashing a black sword at Guo Ran. What everyone was stunned by this sudden turn of events. That sword had already reached Guo Ran. This surprising figure was precisely the Miang Ji Ye whose body had just exploded from the silver light attack. He had once more appeared choosing to attack Guo Ran. Just as Guo Ran was about to be slain by Miang Ji's sword, a black saber slashed toward Miang Ji Ye from a strange angle. Chapter 1849 Bizarre Technique Translator Born to be Miang Ji's sudden appearance was completely unexpected. However, Long Chen seemed to have already seen through this move of his and activated the celestial lightning body blink. Originally, he was unable to confirm where Miang Ji Ye was after his body had exploded. His thought was that he would attack Meng Chi, but unexpectedly, Guo Ran was truly good at provoking other people's ire and had turned himself into Miang Ji's target. To block Miang Ji's attack was too late. Long Chen could only strike Miang Ji Ye from behind, forcing him to receive this attack if he wanted to kill Guo Ran. However, Long Chen was a bit worried. Miang Ji's movement art was too bizarre. Just now, he had clearly been struck by the silver wing horned eagle's attack, but the instant his body exploded, it was like he had shed his skin. Perhaps what had exploded was a substitute, while his true body had appeared underground and attacked Guo Ran. If Meng Ji Ye could use this movement art a second time, then Guo Ran would definitely be doomed. He would choose to strike Guo Ran while receiving Long Chen's attack and then slip away. Fortunately, at that critical moment, Miang Ji Ye chose to block Long Chen's attack. He was sent flying. It was unknown if Miang Ji's slippery technique wasn't ready to be used again, or whether it came with a price that he felt wasn't worth Guo Ran's life. Having brushed right past death, Guo Ran was covered in sweat. Just now, he had really thought he was about to die. HMPH, you were lucky this time. Next time, I definitely won't be as careless. I will definitely cut off your head. Long Chen, Miang Ji Ye was flying back from Long Chen's attack, before Meng Chi and the Silver Wing Horned Eagle could attack again, 
He formed hand seals, summoning a black gate behind him. He stepped into it, vanishing from their sight. All the Dragonblood warriors were shocked by his power. He practically had an undying body. Having such an existence target them was definitely not good. Long Chen went to the hole in the ground. That was where Miang Jie had come out of. Pushing aside the dirt, he noticed something a few hundred meters into the ground. He took out two wooden strips. Between the two wooden strips was a small black object, about as long as a chopstick. It looked like an awl, and at the end of it was a little person forming a hand seal. This sculpture, it looks just like Miang Jie Guo Ran and the others came over to examine it. There was no aura coming from the awl. It looked like a normal metal. This should be the crux of Miang Ji's strange technique. This was how he slipped away like a cicada shedding its shell. I feel like I saw a black light shoot out back then, but it was too fast, and I couldn't grasp it with my eyes or soul, said Long Chen. Yes, there's still a trace of Miang Ji's spiritual fluctuations on it. Although it's almost impossible to sense, I can confirm this little sculpture was the substitute that Miang Ji Ye used to save himself. However, I have no idea how he managed to switch places with his true body and a puppet. This kind of magical art is practically flawless. The three corrupt kings are truly powerful, said Meng Chi. They had clearly seen Miang Ji Ye be killed, and other than Long Chen, they had all fallen for it. As for Long Chen, the only reason he had deduced that Miang Ji Ye hadn't died was because of the sharp intuition of the nine star hegemon body art. He hadn't even seen any clues. This kind of technique was truly terrifying. He's very sinister. If it was a one against one and you saw him be killed with your own eyes, you'd be dying to his sword the next moment without understanding what was going on, said Tang Wan Er. Everyone's expressions were grave. This time, they had come out in high spirits since their power had been raised to an unprecedented level, as they could slaughter Empyreans and Moss and slay a 12th rank magical beast. Guo Ran had been so excited that he was starting to view themselves as unrivaled. However, a blow was given to their confidence now. This substitute puppet technique isn't so easy to use. It definitely comes at a price. Or Guo Ran, you would already be a corpse. Furthermore, if it was so easy to use, there wouldn't be three kings. There would only be one emperor dominating everyone else. I'm confident that the next time he encounters you, he won't even have a chance to run. This technique of his has been exposed now, said Long Chen. Boss, you're speaking too highly of us. I'm sorry, we've lost you face. Xia Chen suddenly walked forward, ashamed. He and Guo Ran had spent a great deal of time and effort to create the formation runes for the Dragonblood Legion to raise their collective power. Originally, he had been hoping to show off the results with pride, but the results were that they had almost been annihilated. Even after spending so many resources, Xia Chen found that they were unable to defeat even one enemy. What nonsense are you spouting? You've already done very well. Miang Jie is one of the Corrupt Path's three kings, an existence at the top of the Corrupt Path's millions of geniuses. Do you think that title was given for nothing? With your current power, as long as you don't encounter monsters on that level, you can dominate the rest of the Yin Yang world. That's enough to be proud of. Long Chen smiled. Boss, they really are monsters. I thought that the Dragonblood Legion was almost unrivaled now, but, this is quite a blow. Guo Ran took off his armor, collapsing on the ground. He hugged Long Chen's leg, bawling. Almighty boss, please give me the power to show off. Otherwise, I won't have anything to live for. As he said this, Guo Ran wiped some mucus and tears onto Long Chen. Fuck. Get away. Long Chen immediately flung Guo Ran off, cursing, grow up, how can I grow up, boss, we spent all the accumulated wealth of the Dragonblood Legion, thinking we could shake the world, but we were crushed by a single person, how am I supposed to live with myself, Guo Ran really began to cry, perhaps others didn't understand, but Xia Chen was feeling the same thing, they had come here completely confident but had almost been destroyed by a single person. Just how were they supposed to explain themselves? Get up and stop crying. Your boss might not have other abilities, but making money is easy. I've already made quite a bit after entering here in advance. Other than that, there's no need to be so dejected. Starting from today, 
You won't need to fear anyone. The next time Miang Jie encounters you, he won't even have a chance to run. Long Chen wriggled his eyebrows a few times with a smile. Boss, you, did you get something good again? Guo Ran immediately shot up with a pleasantly surprised expression. Scram, I knew that you were just faking. Cursed Long Chen. Guo Ran leaped from crying to smiling far too quickly. Long Chen realized that Guo Ran had acted so bitter because he was afraid of being scolded for losing. For now, tell me, how did you encounter this person? Asked Long Chen. Through their explanation, Long Chen learned that Guo Ran, Tang Wanur, Xia Chen, and the others had led the Dragonblood Legion to crush everything in their path. They hadn't encountered anyone who had given them much of a fight. Even 12th rank magical beasts could be slain. However, they would wait for Xia Chen to set up a formation stealthily to injure it beforehand. Perhaps they had been a bit too arrogant. Anyone from the ancient races, ancient family alliance, or the Xuan beasts would be forced out of their way, while anyone from the corrupt path was killed on sight. Perhaps it was because of how vigorously they had been searching for treasures that Miang Jie had noticed them and specifically gone over to attack them. Fortunately, Long Chen had found them in time. Boss, we obtained five young blood pattern lion vultures. Do you want one? It'll be very flashy as a steed. Guo Ran presented five little lions only a few feet tall. They each had a small pair of wings on their backs. These young had yet to even open their eyes. So this was the best time to tame them. Keep them for yourselves. Guo Ran, Zifeng, Gu Yang, Mingyuan, Li Qi. The five of you can have one. Then all the captain class fighters will have a steed. It's good for flashiness and power. Long Chen smiled. Having a 12th rank magical beast as a steed was definitely flashy. However, Long Chen didn't care for such a steed. Just little snow was enough. Haha, <laughs> I told you that boss wouldn't want a steed on this level. HMPH, now you believe me, right? Laughed Guo Ran. Bastard, you were just testing me. Long Chen angrily slapped Guo Ran in the back of the head, eliciting laughter. Guo Ran truly had said that Long Chen wouldn't want a steed on this level. Even a 12th rank magical beast wasn't enough for him. Xia Chen, you can have this blood pattern lion vulture. We can share a flying steed. Guo Ran had Xia Chen place a slave mark on his lion. Guo Ran didn't need such a steed because his armor could fly on its own. This steed would only be used to show off. As for Xia Chen, he needed such a helper. It was beneficial to his safety, and it could stall for him to unleash his magical arts. Should we leave one for Wild? He doesn't know how to fly, said Gu Yang. It's fine. If Wild got hungry, he'd probably eat it. So no need, said Long Chen. Everyone nodded with a laugh. That was true. If Wild got hungry, other than humans, he would eat anything. All right, Xia Chen. I need you to set up a barrier. I'll show you your boss's harvests during this time. As soon as Long Chen said this, everyone's eyes lit up. Chapter 1858 True Legion of Dragonblood Warriors Translator Born to be at up a high mountain, there was a giant cave that was home to a 10th rank magical beast. It was being chased out of its home. After that, Xia Chen set down a formation so that others couldn't peep on what was going on inside the cave. He also set down something to block out sound, so even if there was a commotion, no one would hear anything. All the Dragonblood warriors were looking at Long Chen eagerly, wondering what surprise he had brought them this time. In truth, I really am gratified by your current power. With Xia Chen and Guo Ran's help, you finally have the power that the Dragonblood Legion should possess. Against me and Ji Ye, it wasn't that you weren't strong enough, but that he suppressed you. We only have a few Empyreans, while Miang Ji's manifestation completely crushed you from feeling the energy of the heavenly Deos. Miang Ji Ye is an apex figure in the corrupt path and is also an apex figure of the entire martial heaven continent. If he hadn't used a paragon art, you would have been able to fight much longer against him. That's enough to be proud of. Have you already forgotten your origins? What level were you at originally? He is a genius born with a divine item in hand. We have climbed to our current height step by step and can already compete with him. So don't be depressed. It should be Miang Jie who's depressed. He's definitely somewhere cursing and breaking furniture to vent, said Long Chen. 
This defeat had affected the Dragonblood Legion's morale, so Long Chen needed to give them some encouragement. Miying Jie was in existence on the same level as Ziluo. Against such an impressive opponent, even Long Chen couldn't say that he would definitely beat him. What he could say though was that if any other group with the same cultivation bases as the Dragonblood Warriors were to face Miying Jie, they would have been annihilated in an instant without any ability to resist. Starting today, you will be completely transformed. I guarantee that the next time Miying Jie sees you, you'll beat the crap out of him. Everyone, take a look at my harvest. The time to share my booty has come. Long Chen's eyes were shining. That appearance didn't look like a generation's expert, but more like a bandit distributing his ill-gotten gains. Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, the first treasure is for you guys. Long Chen waved his hand, and a pile of yellow fruit appeared in front of them. This is a treasure? I'll try it. Guo Ran was fast, and he immediately grabbed one and bit into it, expecting a sweet and juicy bite. Guo Ran instantly spat it out. Boss, you're conning me. This isn't fruit. This is dirt. You want us to eat it. Guo Ran continued to spit as if he had just taken a bite of sand. These. These are thick earth essence fruit. Peerless earth elemental treasures. I've seen them in an ancient scripture. Shouted Li Qi suddenly. Thick earth essence fruit consisted of pure earth energy that contained a kind of divine nature. That divine nature made it an inborn earth essence. The most primordial earth essence in the world. Guo Ran. You fool. You actually wasted such a priceless treasure. Cursed Song Mingyuan. It's fine. I have as many of this fruit as you want. Hopefully, you can absorb more of it and awaken your manifestations. Perhaps you two will become the first in the Dragonblood Legion to fully awaken your manifestations. Said Long Chen. There was a giant thick earth essence fruit tree in his primal chaos space. More fruit kept maturing every day. So it was enough for the two of them. It must be hard on you, eating dirt all day. Guo Ran comforted the two of them sympathetically. This fruit was essentially just dirt, like sand. That mouthfeel was not good. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan completely ignored Guo Ran. They began consuming the fruit, swallowing even the skin, not wasting a single bit of it. If Guo Ran hadn't shown others what it felt like to eat one, others would think that it was truly a delicious fruit. All right. The thick earth essence fruit is just a starter, and just for Li Qi and Song Mingyuan. Now we're getting to the main dish. Long Chen took a deep breath. He had to suppress his own excitement. Starting today, you will be true Dragonblood Warriors. A golden scale suddenly appeared in the air in front of everyone. A fierce aura came from it, and the roar of a furious dragon shook their ears. Other than Long Chen, everyone's jaws dropped. This scale, could it be? Guo Ran couldn't speak properly. Correct. It's a dragon scale. It's the reverse scale of the ancient beast known as the metal devouring evil dragon. Inside is its essence blood. When I obtained it, it was just preparing to make a breakthrough to the Samsara realm. So the essence blood inside it is very pure and powerful. Once you absorb it, your blood will be dragon blood. Once you can control it, I'll teach you the dragon blood body tempering art. You will also be able to upgrade your bodies with dragon blood. How is it? Are you looking forward to it? Long Chen laughed mischievously. Boss, is this really possible? Gu Yang's voice shuddered. He knew Long Chen wouldn't lie to them, but he still couldn't believe it. It seems you've coveted the dragon blood body tempering art for a long time. Don't worry, you can do it. However, when you're covered in dragon scales, this bright head of yours will probably turn golden said Long Chen. Everyone laughed excitedly. Long Chen's green dragon battle armor was something they were all aware of. That was one of his strongest techniques, and that explosive energy excited them each time they saw him use it. Never in their dreams would they have thought that they would also learn this skill. They really would be dragon blood warriors. All right, other than Meng Chi, Wan Er, and the healing disciples, everyone should prepare to absorb the essence blood. I've tested it and it should be more than enough for everyone. So you should absorb as much blood as possible, with the precondition that your mind can endure the dragon pressure, said Long Chen. His gaze swept over everyone. Guo Ran, you can go first. Boss, why me? I feel like Gu Yang going first would be the wisest choice. After all, he's sturdier, said Guo Ran, immediately getting a bad feeling. 
Stop messing around. The first drop has the least impact, and considering your weak willpower, you won't be able to draw out a single drop by the end, said Long Chen. Oh, many thanks, boss. Guo Ran excitedly followed Long Chen's instructions, placing his hand on the dragon scale. Long Chen patted the scale, and it shuddered. A sharp aura appeared, cutting open Guo Ran's palm. A golden drop of essence blood entered his palm. Guo Ran's whole body shook, and he suddenly coughed up a mouthful of blood. His mouth frothed, and his eyes almost rolled into the back of his head. Long Chen ignored him, continuing to force another two drops into Guo Ran's body. Guo Ran suddenly shot back, smashing into the wall of the cave. He coughed up three mouthfuls of blood and fainted, his body still twitching. Everyone was dumbfounded, feeling a chill. Guo Ran was just the start but had lost consciousness. Long Chen had to forcibly add the next two drops, as Guo Ran hadn't even been able to bear the first one. He, actually I lied. The first drop is the most berserk. Guo Ran's will is too weak, so it just so happens that the will of the dragon blood can temper him. Now that the most berserk will has been used up, it should be easier for the rest of you. Don't bother with him. Enduring this tempering is good. As for the rest of you, I won't help. Rely on your own power to absorb as much essence blood as possible, suppressing its will and erasing its berserk nature. Only by suppressing it yourselves can the dragon blood flawlessly merge with your essence blood. As for Guo Ran, I had no choice but to help him. However, helping him would lower the quality of the essence blood he absorbed. But no one asked him to cultivate like this. The rest of you can rely on your own power. The more the better. Gu Yang, it's your turn. Men Qi and Tang Wan Er exchanged a glance. They looked at Guo Ran who was still twitching, and this was their first time feeling that he was pitiable. It seemed he had already been conned by Long Chen many times. Gu Yang stepped forward, pressing his hand against the dragon scale. A drop of golden blood flowed into his palm. Gu Yang's body shuddered, but he quickly calmed down, absorbing a second drop. Long Chen nodded. Gu Yang's physical body was truly powerful and his will was tough. This essence blood contained the metal devouring evil dragon's will and wasn't so easy to subdue. Gu Yang repeatedly absorbed three drops of its blood without his expression changing. This showed his power. Three drops. Five drops. Ten drops. Boom. Suddenly, Gu Yang couldn't hold on any longer and was sent flying by the dragon scale. Chapter 1851 Fully Refining the Golden Dragon Teeth Translator Born to be Gu Yang finally couldn't endure any longer. However, he had absorbed 37 drops of the metal devouring evil dragon's essence blood, far surpassing Long Chen's expectations. He had originally guessed that Gu Yang's limit would be around 20 drops, but Gu Yang's will was strong enough to suppress the blood of the metal devouring evil dragon. After absorbing the essence blood, Gu Yang sat on the ground, his face a bit pale as his veins bulged. It was vaguely possible to see golden blood flowing within his body. Next, following him was Li Qi. He absorbed 23 drops before reaching his limit and being blown back. After Li Qi was Song Mingyuan, he absorbed 24 drops before coughing up two large mouthfuls of blood. He received quite an injury, almost having the metal devouring evil dragons will invade his mind see. Long Chen was forced to suppress it. After them were the squad leaders. They were also very powerful, with each person absorbing around 15 drops. Some of them absorbed one or two drops more or less than the others, which meant that the difference between them was quite small. Of course, this statement was only true if you ignored the one twitching on the ground. The ordinary dragon blood warriors had a limit of 10 drops, but that was very gratifying. They had already surpassed Long Chen's expectations. Their tough wills were comparable to any peak genius. Originally, he had estimated that he would have half of the metal devouring evil dragon's essence blood left once everyone was done absorbing it, but now it was almost used up. There were less than a hundred drops left. Boss, do you think I can handle a drop of it? Asked Xia Chen. All the men had finished absorbing it. Even some of the women had absorbed it. Now, he was the only man who hadn't absorbed it, along with Meng Qi, Tang Wan Er, and the healing disciples. His face was burning hot. I don't think you should. Although you have gone through the upgrade of the blood essence stone and the blood soul stone, 
your physical body doesn't have that much potential. A single drop can take your life. Furthermore, your profession is a grand formation master. That's an extremely rare and noble profession. Why envy others? Long Chen shook his head. It's because he can't outdrink anyone in the Dragonblood Legion or outfight them, and he's too embarrassed to outcurse them. He wants to blend in, said Tang Wan'er with a smile. Long Chen came to a realization. Xia Chen was more delicate than the rest of the Dragonblood Legion. If he wore a scholar's band, he would look just like a scholar, which wasn't the same style as the rest of the coarse Dragonblood Legion. It's not that. I'm getting along very well with everyone in the Dragonblood Legion, said Xia Chen awkwardly. Since you've joined the Dragonblood Legion, we're a family, so you don't need to compete or try to make yourself more like everyone else. Don't force yourself to be someone you're not, said Long Chen, patting Xia Chen on the shoulder. Xia Chen wasn't very talkative and was more reserved. Long Chen was a bit worried he felt out of place. You've misunderstood. I have a different reason for wanting to absorb that metal-devouring evil dragon essence blood. I have a crazy idea. I want to create a formation connected through bloodlines. If it works, then supported by bloodline power, we won't need to use outer runes to merge our energy. It will increase the efficiency, increasing our power while decreasing the exhaustion rate, said Xia Chen. Long Chen and the others were surprised. So Xia Chen had actually thought of something like this. If it really worked, the Dragonblood Legion would completely transform. Your physical body isn't strong enough. It would kill you. But I can erase 90% of the metal devouring evil dragon's will before sending it into your body. That should be the limit that your body can endure. It should be enough for your purposes, said Long Chen after a moment's thought. Good. I just need to have the ability to feel it and see if I can make a formation so that the power of everyone's spirit blood can be joined together, said Xia Chen excitedly. Long Chen extracted a drop of essence blood. He erased 90% of the power within it before slowly sending it into Xia Chen's body. However, even having 90% of its power erased, Xia Chen turned pale, his whole body trembling. Xia Chen was a formation cultivator. His energy was mostly focused on his soul. Formation cultivators could be called a kind of soul cultivator, and their weak physical bodies were something that they couldn't do anything about. All right, they're in seclusion refining the essence blood. The rest of you don't need to be envious. There's good stuff for you as well. Long Chen called over Men Chi and the others. Taking out a large roasting sheet, he showed them a large fish that he had already finished cooking. Come. I'm treating you to some fish. Long Chen smiled. All right, then we'll have a taste of boss's craftsmanship. The healing disciples were mostly women. Seeing the piping hot fish, they took out their knives and forks. Yes, this fish is definitely delicious. It melts as soon as it enters the mouth. Its fragrance overflows. What kind of fish is this? It's so good, exclaimed Tang Wan'er. I heard it's called Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish. The taste is all right. Long Chen also took a big bite. The Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish wasn't just a treasure. It was famed for its flavor and was something said to be the main dish for major figures back in ancient times. Its taste truly lived up to the legends. Never heard of it, but it really is delicious. Praised Tang Wan'er as she continued taking big bites. Men Chi was in the midst of chewing slowly and savoring it when she thought of what Long Chen had just said. Her eyes suddenly widened. What did you just say? Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish, the one with the heaven-defying ability to awaken one's bloodline, one of the most precious ancient treasures ever, that Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish, well, I suppose, if you wanted to, you could put it that way, Long Chen smiled, Men Qi's plate dropped to the ground, she grabbed Long Chen, shouting, you fool, the most precious thing about the Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish is its blood, you, you actually roasted it. Do you know, with such a giant fish, there would be at least a 50% chance of it being capable of awakening a person's bloodline power? Heavens, have you gone crazy? The always calm Men Chi had such a huge reaction. Seeing Long Chen destroy a priceless natural treasure like this, Men Chi was speechless. So its blood is useful? All right, next time I'll bleed it before baking it, said Long Chen. Next time? Wait a minute, you mean. You have more. 
Meng Qi's beautiful eyes stared at Long Chen with disbelief. Yes, as many as I want. Even if you wanted to eat it all day, I could satisfy you. Long Chen winked. Long Chen, you're evil. You definitely did that on purpose. Raged Meng Qi upon realizing she had fallen for his teasing. She angrily pinched him, causing him to laugh. It seemed that this was his first time managing to find such success teasing the ever calm Meng Qi. He felt truly accomplished. Within the primal chaos space, he was constantly feeding the scarlet blood spirit fish, and they were constantly breeding and growing. Now, Long Chen had over 700 fish kings that were more than 3 meters long. As for those a meter long, there were tens of thousands of them, and he couldn't count the even smaller ones. As long as he continued to feed them, they would continue reproducing. That was why Long Chen dared to take out a fish king as a snack. Its taste was even better than he had expected. In an incense sticks worth of a time, a three meter fish king was finished by over 50 people. Long Chen proposed roasting another one, but Tang Wanner shook her head, saying that if she ate another one, her stomach would explode since she wouldn't be able to stop herself. After a fish king had entered their stomachs, they felt completely relaxed, even lazy. Tang Wanner leaned against Meng Chi, feeling an urge to sleep. Meng Chi looked at the dragon blood warriors who were covered in sweat as they refined the dragon essence blood. They had entered a bitter meditative state. She couldn't help saying, Is it really alright for us to be enjoying fish while they're like that? That's called different people have different fates. Don't pity them. Once they refine the essence blood, you'll have to be the ones envying them. One or, I'll be preparing a scarlet blood spirit fish for each one of you. You can absorb their essence blood. As for the actual fish, I'm sure you have your own methods. Whether you boil or steam it, roast or bake it, it's up to you. In any case, its flavor is locked in its flesh and won't interfere with anything else. Meng Chi, I'll need your help. Help me refine the dragon teeth. Evil Moon is in seclusion, so I need them. During the next while, Meng Chi and Long Chen began working on refining the 71 golden dragon teeth slowly erasing the metal devouring evil dragon's will. Tang Wanner and the others were the most blessed, absorbing the scarlet blood spirit fish's essence blood while enjoying its taste. A week passed. With Meng Qi's help, Long Chen had finally finished wiping away the original will of the dragon teeth. He no longer needed to worry about a backlash. Now he could nourish them with his mind. Other than Evil Moon, he had new divine items. Divine items that he could control with his soul that filled him with confidence. If Ziluo, Miying Jie, or true immortal Jiaoki had been forced to the point of unleashing the full power of their divine items, he would have been at a disadvantage before this. That was especially true of Miying Jie. While Long Chen thought that he would be able to endure it himself, the rest of the Dragonblood Legion wouldn't have been able to. With the dragon teeth refined, Long Chen left the rest of the fish kings with Meng Qi and the others letting them slowly absorb them. Reviving their bloodlines was a somewhat slow process with low chances of success. Long Chen had them absorb the scarlet blood spirit fish's essence blood slowly and temporarily not go out. Once the dragon blood warriors finished refining the dragon essence blood, he would impart the dragon blood body tempering art to them. He recorded the method for training in the dragon blood body tempering art in photographic jades and left it for them. After arranging everything, he stealthily slipped away. In the end, he still wished to fulfill Yan Nanshan's request. Although Yi Lingshan was definitely also searching, he couldn't place all his hopes on her. Leaving the mountain valley, Long Chen looked at the map, choosing a location that others hadn't stepped into yet. He began flying over. Chapter 1852 Dogs are loyal. Nobles aren't translator. Born to be before going out. Long Chen left the divine items he had seized to Meng Qi so that she could distribute them. The dragon blood warriors would need to get used to their power after refining the dragon blood. Only then could they train in the dragon blood body tempering art. This would require quite a bit of time. Long Chen also told Meng Qi to do her best at refining the blue eye peacock's true feathers. If she had the silver wing horned eagle, the 999 true feathers as well as the original True Feather, Meng Qi would be able to fight on the same level as experts like Zi Luo and True Immortal Jiaoki. It just so happened that everyone was in seclusion now. 
So once the Dragonblood warriors finished refining the essence blood, she could go roaming on her own again. As for awakening her bloodline, the main thing would be whether or not any terrifying experts had ever appeared amongst her ancestors. If no such amazing figures had appeared amongst them, there wasn't much potential to be excavated for her bloodline. However, if such a peerless expert had appeared once, then she would be much more powerful. Anyway, whether or not such a powerful figure had ever appeared, the Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish could still make her bloodline purer. It could increase the quality of her spirit root and even draw her closer to the heavenly deos. Even in the worst case scenario where they had little effect on her, they would still cause her spiritual strength to multiply. Because soul cultivators mostly inherited their spiritual prowess, so she would awaken at least a bit of power in that aspect. Long Chen had also tried it, and he didn't know if it was because of the nine star hegemon body art, but the scarlet blood spirit fish had no effect on him. He could only satisfy himself with the taste. As for the wood cultivators, once their core energy was fully excavated and awakened, Long Chen trusted that they would become the strongest healing cores. Leaving the mountain, Long Chen flew toward a place that hadn't been marked by anyone. He wanted to search through as many places as possible. Stop. This path was opened by me. These trees I hear Long Chen was in the midst of flying when three masked experts blocked him. However, when they saw who it was, they immediately fled for their lives. Get back here, or you'll all die, snorted Long Chen. Those three experts froze. They had just started fleeing but they didn't dare to continue. They obediently returned. Senior apprentice brother Long Chen, we were just joking. Don't take it so seriously. In this world, who would be so stupid as to dare to rob you? One of them took off his mask, and repeated bowing toward him. It seemed he knew that if Long Chen wanted to kill them, it wouldn't take him the slightest bit of effort. But experts on his level would disdain killing people like them as well. They had been quite unlucky to encounter him. His aura had been hidden, and he was wearing black robes. They had thought that he was a lone expert of the corrupt path or from some other race. The majority of the righteous path's disciples wore white robes. The corrupt path mostly wore blood-colored robes, but a portion of them liked black. So they had mistakenly assumed Long Chen was from the corrupt path. Not sensing anything special about his aura, they had immediately swaggered out. But then upon seeing his face... They had almost crapped their pants. That's right. Senior apprentice brother Long Chen is a mighty hero. One of the others added a few gratifying words. Who you rob has nothing to do with me. Hand over your maps. Are there any interesting regions nearby? Asked Long Chen. The three of them hastily took out their maps. One of them obediently said. We slew seven corrupt experts in the past few days. During the soul sark. We noticed a sinister forest nearby. Based on their memories, quite a few powerful experts are gathering there. Most likely, there is some strange life form there that can kill others in a bizarre way. These corrupt experts were fleeing from that region. Then, he, we cut them down, said one of them proudly. It seems you specialize at plundering the corrupt path, asked Long Chen with a bit of surprise. Not really. We'll rob anyone, even those from the righteous path, but we won't kill them. As for other races, we don't care that much. However, we do choose to target corrupt experts more, said the first one that had spoken. He looked at Long Chen nervously. Long Chen looked at him and smiled faintly. You're quite smart. This person was smart because he had chosen to tell the truth. That made Long Chen feel better about him, and this behavior didn't give Long Chen a reason to kill them. The cultivation world was one where the strong devoured the weak and the righteous path in particular was a scraggly bunch. Many of them had left the Martial Heaven Alliance. The righteous path was currently in a very tumultuous period. Who was friend or foe was unclear. Plundering the people from the righteous path but not taking their lives was already better than most people. The reason this person chose to tell the truth was because he felt that he didn't have the ability to lie in front of Long Chen. Being a bit smarter might increase the odds that Long Chen would let them off. Are these two your brothers? Long Chen looked over the three of them, finding that this person was the leader. Just now when the three of them had blocked him, it had been the other two to block his path and draw his attention. While this smart fellow had snuck up behind him to launch a sneak attack. Yes, 
Although he didn't know why Long Chen would ask such a thing, he could only obediently answer. Good. Using your smarts for others is real smarts, said Long Chen. Just now, when the three of them had fled, they had gone in an arc, leaving almost identical distances between each other. That meant that this person had been thinking about the other two, or he would have chosen to flee in the other direction. In that scenario, Long Chen would most likely choose to chase after the two of them, and so this person's odds of fleeing safely were much higher. But he hadn't done that. Being stared at by Long Chen, this person felt like his soul was laid bare before him. He couldn't help sighing. Senior Apprentice Brothers praises too much. I, Wang Mao, cannot accept it. The three of us are just independent cultivators. My two brothers were set up by others in their sects and kicked out, while I was also crowded out, and in my anger, I schemed to kill the other side. Unfortunately, I ended up exposing myself and had no choice but to flee from my sect later on. While searching for an ancient remnant, I was injured and almost died. It was my two brothers who saved me. As a result, the three of us chose to become brothers closer than blood brothers. We will live and die together. Actually, we've been constantly doing some shameful things these years, but we have no choice. It's to live, to get stronger, to not be crushed like ants. Not bad. Dogs are loyal, but nobles aren't. It is the people living on the bottom rungs of life that end up with greater integrity and camaraderie. When the yin-yang world closes, you can come to my Zhuanshan Dao sect or the Martial Heaven Alliance. Don't roam around the world aimlessly. The righteous path needs people like you, even if you're bandits, said Long Chen. This person couldn't be called a good person, but Long Chen had seen his heart and felt that he wasn't bad. Even bandits could act open and above board. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen, we've been abandoned by large sects. Do you really think we can join? So what if you were abandoned? I almost left the Martial Heaven Alliance myself. If there's no place for me there, I'll make my own place in the world. The righteous path is already a mess, and the ones causing the mess are those without any unyielding backbone. They only know how to scheme all day and backstab each other. However, the huge waves recently could be called a big thing. They will wash away the trash. A person can lack intelligence and brains, but they can't lack that unyielding nature. Well, there's no need for me to say so much. When you get back, go find Yi Lingxian. I'll say that I have found a few capable helpers for her, so you can just follow her in the future. She is the heir to the Martial Heaven Alliance, so following her will definitely be good for you, said Long Chen. The heavenly genius Yi Lingxian? Will she really accept? The three of them were startled. Yi Lingxian was famous, and they didn't think they were a good match for her. She most definitely will. If she doesn't, you can come to the Zhuanshan Dao sect. But I wouldn't worry about it, said Long Chen. Yi Lingxian needed to cultivate her own personal group. Although Wang Mao's group wasn't very powerful, once such people accepted a leader, they would be absolutely loyal. Low combat power could be made up for with resources, but loyalty was difficult to cultivate. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen, we can't thank you enough. Wang Mao's group knelt toward Long Chen. The last few years had been hard on them. They longed to join a powerful sect, but they didn't dare to at the same time, feeling like no sect would accept them. Get up. Don't randomly kneel. It's such a loathsome etiquette, said Long Chen hastily. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen, I have a favor, said Wang Mao. Speak. Well, in our group, we actually have a few other brothers. Can. Wang Mao blushed. This group of his was clearly a bandit group. As long as you can trust them, you can bring them in. However, you all have to be prepared. If you join a sect, you are bound by the sect's rules. You won't be as free, said Long Chen severely. That won't be a problem, promised Wang Mao. All right, then I'm going to take a look at that mysterious forest, said Long Chen. He had obtained the map, and that region was marked clearly by Wang Mao. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen, please wait a moment. I have something here that might be helpful to you, said Wang Mao suddenly, taking out a certain object. Chapter 1853 Butterfly Wing Dragon Bone Mandara Translator Born to be what is this? Long Chen looked at the object blankly. It was a small bone with many lines carved into it. 
The bone was slightly translucent and emitted odd fluctuations. It's a strange thing we obtained from one of the Xuan beasts we cut down. Through a soul sark, we learned it's a secret communication tool of the Xuan beasts. If this bone is activated, it can search the surroundings to see if there are any Xuan beasts nearby. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen, if you take it, you'll be able to gain some information. When many Xuan beasts gather in one place, there's a higher chance of there being treasures. You can activate this bone with spiritual strength to search for the nearby Xuan beasts. However, it requires a special technique to use it to communicate with them, and that technique was guarded by spiritual restrictions, so we couldn't learn it. We were planning on throwing away this bone because we didn't want the Xuan beasts to attack us, but I feel like someone like you doesn't fear that, said Wang Mao. Long Chen naturally wouldn't fear it. He didn't even know how many Xuan beasts he had slain, so he had no misjivings. He directly accepted the bone, telling them to be safe. He set off in the direction they had pointed out. The Yin Yang world was huge, unimaginably huge. However, leaving was not difficult. When the second group of experts had entered, they had come in through several large gates. Several channels had appeared between the Yin Yang world and the Martial Heaven continent and it was possible to come and go through those gates. Anyone in the soul transformation realm could go through them as they pleased. However, that was only the case while the Yang side of the Yin Yang world was facing the Martial Heaven continent. When the Yin side started turning over, they had to immediately leave, or they would never be able to leave again. Long Chen saw a few experts carefully searching the land as he rushed over. He ignored them, going straight to his target. The high mountains gradually became plains. Short trees appeared, as well as mist ahead. Long Chen's lips curled up slightly. He seemed to have come to a realization. The Yun Yang world's treasures were all protected by formations to block others from gathering them. The blue eye peacock's nest had been like that, and the mysterious egg's location had also been like that. This place was the same. There had to be many restrictions inside. As expected, once he got closer, the mist blocked his divine sense. He didn't dare to continue flying. He landed, walking steadily on the ground. Just as he approached the mist, he saw a corpse ahead. It was a mangled mess as if it had been cut by a thousand blades. It was beyond recognition. Not even his Yuan spirit could escape. Long Chen saw a ball of black chi on this person's forehead. His Yuan spirit had been destroyed within his mind. See, this person was a rank 7 celestial. Long Chen couldn't help sighing. In the dangerous Yun Yang world, even Empyreans had no guarantee of safety. Rank 9 Celestials were dancing on the tip of a blade. They could lose their lives at any moment. For a Rank 7 Celestial to also come here, their chances of surviving were minuscule. However, Long Chen had no intention of laughing at this person. He just felt a bit bad inside. This world was just so cruel. Without resources. Without a powerful background, the only thing you could do was risk your life. There truly were existences that could soar from nothing, but the odds were constantly against them. Risking their lives to create miracles, the person who succeeded would of their name shake the world, but the millions of others who did the same but failed would not be remembered. No one wanted to throw their life away, but sometimes there was nothing that could be done. Everyone wanted to live with dignity, everyone had dreams and everyone had things that they wanted to protect. There was no high or low when it came to lives, noble or lowly. It could only be said that the cultivation world was just this cruel. Long Chen tore apart the ground, burying this person. Folklore said that people needed the earth to be at peace, and only then could they enter reincarnation. Those whose corpses were left in the wild would become lonely ghosts forced into a miserable existence. Long Chen had never believed in that kind of supernatural thing, but he did believe in dust to dust, earth to earth. People ate the earth seed and would return to the earth when things were over. It could also be considered a kind of reincarnation, another kind of continuance to life. Long Chen had just taken a few steps past the corpse when a tender vine lying amongst the grass suddenly snaked around Long Chen's leg. Thorns on the vine stabbed into his leg like a viper injecting its poison. At the same time, countless vines shot out at him from the surroundings. Long Chen coldly stared at the vine twisting around his leg. Those thorns were stabbing into him as hard as they could, but they couldn't injure him. 
His leg was covered in green dragon scales. The thorns couldn't break his defense. Long Chen's arm shook ever so slightly, and a burst of power erupted, blowing away all the vines twining around him. Get out here. Long Chen stamped on the ground, causing the earth to crumble. A large figure appeared, looking like a giant ginseng. Around it were tree demons with countless roots attacking Long Chen. With a single pointing of his finger, a lightning sword pierced its body. That pile of tree demons instantly withered. Continuing onward, he saw another corpse in less than a mile. However, he didn't bother with this one as it belonged to the corrupt path. As he continued forward, the ground continued to split open. Tree demons came out and attacked him, but his footsteps didn't pause. His lightning blade slashed repeatedly, destroying the tree demons. After the tree demons were slain, they all quickly withered away, transforming into nothingness in just a few breaths. More and more tree demons appeared as he went deeper. They weren't particularly strong, most being around the level of 10th rank magical beasts. However, there were many of them, and they attempted to stab him with their toxic thorns. They could have a fatal danger to ordinary celestials, but they were nothing to Long Chen. He couldn't even count how many of the tree demons he killed. In any case, after two hours, the tree demons were still continuing to wildly assault him as if they didn't have brains of their own and didn't know fear. Slashing his saber once more, he cleaned up the tree demons ahead of him and saw light. The endless tree demons stopped. Instead, he saw a world of birdsong and flowers ahead. The air was filled with a fresh and clean flavor, invigorating him. It was like he had just had a good sleep. However, that was just on the surface. Right in front of him was a corpse. It was a red-robed man from the corrupt path. He was peacefully lying there as if he was asleep. He still had a satisfied and intoxicated smile. But he would never wake from this sleep. Break. Long Chen suddenly shouted. The beautiful world around him suddenly changed as his spiritual strength erupted. A large and imposing mountain range appeared. These mountains each had a large tree on top of them. They were like beautiful pavilions. Each one of their leaves emitted a dreamlike haze. The traps really come one by one. Long Chen shook his head. That disciple had charged his way through the battles with the tree demons to see a beautiful world. As soon as he relaxed, his mind was invaded by the illusions, and he died without even realizing it. Those leaves on the trees had a strange rune on them that emitted the dreamlike haze. As soon as you looked at them, you would feel sleepy. Even having unleashed his powerful spiritual strength and breaking the illusion, Long Chen didn't dare to be careless. Those ancient trees gave him a sense of immense danger. He slowly advanced, passing mountain after mountain. He chose a random path that winded around them. Only midway through did he realize that these mountains had a formation protecting them. Each mountain had a formation covering it and the core of the formation was the tree at the top. A translucent barrier could be seen covering each of the mountains, and starlight sparkled on top of the barriers. Each sparkle was a formation rune, which was actually the exact same as the runes on the leaves. It couldn't be that all the formations are linked, right? Seeing the unending mountains with a tree on top of each, Long Chen couldn't help gasping. He felt like his guess was correct. These strange runes and the formations had made this world sink into a special rhythm. It was like the tide, pushing and pulling. There was definitely a connection between them all. He carefully advanced. After passing by a few more mountains, he suddenly noticed a strange flower growing on top of one of the mountains. That flower was very strange. It had seven leaves that looked very similar to dandelion leaves. The six petals were in three groups of two each pair looking like butterfly wings fluttering. Bursts of fragrance came from it. It's the butterfly wing dragon bone mandara Long Chen let out a startled cry spontaneously. After shouting it, he actually came to a blank pause. I recognize this flower and know it's a treasure, but I don't know its use. What does that mean? His intuition was telling him that the butterfly wing dragon bone mandara should be used for refining pills, but he didn't know what pill. Were his pill sovereign memories incomplete? Well, there was nothing he could do about that, and he had no time. He would first get the flower before anything else. But how was he supposed to get it? With the formation protecting it, he couldn't directly pluck it. He then roamed around the mountains before his eyes suddenly lit up. 
His luck had finally taken a turn for the better. He found that there was another butterfly wing dragon bone mandara that was growing outside the formation. It wasn't behind the barrier. It was on the very edge. Long Chen carefully crept over, taking out a jade shovel. He lightly scooped it out of the ground along with its roots. Delighted, he was about to put it away when a sharp ray of sword chi slashed toward the back of his head. Chapter 1854 Heavenly Fate Expert Translator Born to be the sharp attack came without the slightest warning. Only once it was about to strike him did Long Chen sense it. His attacker was definitely very powerful. With a cold snort, Long Chen didn't even look back. Lightning runes appeared, and it was like he was suddenly yanked away. He appeared further away. The sharp sword chi struck the barrier, causing the barrier's runes to quiver intensely. Countless runes surged toward the strange tree at the top. That tree suddenly rocked, its leaves emitting rays of divine light that shot toward the attacker. Not only that, but the surrounding mountains formations also lit up. It was like a chain reaction, and rays of light shot out mercilessly from all directions. Fuck. Long Chen cursed inside. Those light rays were including Long Chen in their range. He didn't even have time to dodge. Countless light rays shot their way at him, their sharpness causing goosebumps to creep over his skin. But fortunately, they were focused on the other person. When the light rays faded, Long Chen looked around. Everything had gone back to normal. As for that person, he had vanished. There wasn't the slightest trace of his existence left. There was no corpse. Not even a blood stain. How vicious. Long Chen clicked his tongue. This formation was truly terrifying. Let alone a soul transformation expert. Even a nether passage expert would probably have died. Just now, he hadn't gotten a good look at who had attacked him, but based on their abilities to sneak up on him so well, they had to be a powerful expert and might have been amongst the first wave of experts to be sent in. However, even an expert on this level was killed by this formation without being able to make a sound. Long Chen blessed his luck that he hadn't tried to snatch anything from behind the barriers. Just now, he really had been thinking about doing so. Looking at the results though, he abandoned that idea Novaloon.com he put away the butterfly wing dragon bone mandara. Just one was enough with the primal chaos space. He could breed as many of them as he needed. Although he didn't know how to use them, his intuition was telling him that it was a priceless treasure. It seemed this place was a private garden that was protected by a grand formation. This place definitely has a master. But who is it? Long Chen was filled with suspicions. If all of this belonged to someone then why wouldn't they have actual people defending the treasures? Just relying on formations wasn't very reliable. Continuing onward, he saw that some of the mountains didn't have formations protecting them. However, there were also no precious medicines growing within them. It seemed that they had already been gathered. As he went onward, he felt like he was in a maze. All the mountains were almost identical. It was all too easy to get lost. Long Chen left his own specific spiritual marks as he advanced. So at the very least, he could retreat. Radiant Fire Flower, 7 Star Primordial Yang Grass, 4 Claw Heavenly South Star. Fuck, I can see them but can't get at them. Long Chen's heart was dripping blood. Although he had gained a few outliers on the edges of the mountains, the majority were locked behind the barriers. All of you, just wait. Sooner or later, you'll be mine. Long Chen clenched his teeth. This was the only way for him to comfort himself. Suddenly, some light fluctuations drew his attention. He immediately began rushing over in that direction. However, within this place, he couldn't go in a straight line. He had no choice but to detour around the mountains. As he got closer, the fluctuations grew clearer. People were fighting, but their fighting fluctuations were suppressed. You should just stop. Within this place, you aren't a match for me. Obediently surrender, and I won't harm a hair on your head. A man's voice rang out. His voice was very gentle, but calculating, as if everything that had happened was within his expectations. He was advising someone, but his tone was unquestionable. This voice was foreign to Long Chen, and he couldn't help being curious who would be so brazen as to fight here. If he touched the formations, he would be annihilated. The Martial Heaven Alliance has never offended Heavenly Fate Island. 
Are you not afraid of the Martial Heaven Alliance's army crashing down on your heavenly fate island? Demanded a woman, her voice full of righteous indignation. Long Chen was startled. This voice belonged to Yi Lingxian. Hiding his aura, Long Chen slowly got closer. Passing a mountain, he finally saw a somewhat spacious mountain valley. But it was only 10 miles wide. This mountain valley was the only space in the surroundings that wasn't protected by a formation. Within it was a woman with a sword fighting a man. The man had cyan robes and wore his hair in a Daoist's top knot. He was wielding a strange weapon. It looked like a sword but had no blade or tip. It was a ruler covered in various runes as well as meticulous marks of tiny scales. Neither of them had activated their manifestations, nor did they dare to go all out here. All their power was focused within their weapons. What surprised Long Chen was that the man's strange ruler seemed to be able to predict the future. Each time, his moves would block Yi Lingxian's attacks before she could fully unleash them. Each time she tried to attack, he would easily resolve it. As for when he attacked, his attack would always catch her off guard. Yi Lingxian was clearly at a disadvantage. His strange ruler was blocking Yi Lingxian's attacks perfectly. It was like he was playing around. The Martial Heaven Alliance? Do you think it's the old unstoppable alliance? When Ku Jinying went into seclusion, the Martial Heaven Alliance's interior was infiltrated by outsiders. On the surface, it looks like 20% of the Righteous Path has left the Martial Heaven Alliance, but there's over 30% of people who have adopted a wait-and-see approach. For a single Long Chen, Ku Jinying has become enemies with the rest of the world. Her stubbornness has brought a calamity to the Martial Heaven Alliance. Who would be willing to sacrifice themselves fighting for the Martial Heaven Alliance just because Ku Jinying insists on protecting Long Chen? I guarantee that as long as she doesn't expel Long Chen, more and more people will leave the Martial Heaven Alliance, until it finally completely fractures. As long as the proportion of people who want to leave surpasses a third, the equilibrium of the Martial Heaven Alliance will be shattered. We're already not far from that number. The Martial Heaven Alliance's destruction is an unstoppable trend. My Heavenly Fate Island has already read that this is the will of the heavens. The destiny of the Martial Heaven Alliance has come to an end. So I'd advise you to surrender while you can, or death will be the only thing left for you. The man's words weren't wrong. The righteous path's hearts had never been united. They constantly schemed and fought amongst themselves. The Martial Heaven Alliance was not a sect but a force of all the righteous path sects to resist the corrupt path. When the Martial Heaven Alliance had first been formed, it had been because the righteous path's experts and sects had been like sand. Each individual could be easily picked off and suppressed by the other large powers, let alone the corrupt path's sneak attacks. In the face of a mortal crisis, the righteous path had united into an alliance. This alliance had been on an unprecedented scale. All the Righteous Path's disciples had been united, and the Martial Heaven Alliance had instantly leaped to become the largest alliance on the Martial Heaven continent. Its position was something that no one could rattle. Now however, people seemed to have forgotten why the Martial Heaven Alliance had been established, as well as the dark times the Righteous Path had experienced back then. They had also forgotten the history of how the corrupt path, the ancient races, and the Xuan beasts had almost caused the righteous path to be destroyed. It was a typical case of forgetting about the injury once the scab healed. Many clever people fell victim to their own smarts. They thought that the change of the era would cause the state of the world to completely transform, and they wanted to get as much out of this new era as possible. They wanted to rise in the world. However, they had overlooked the fact that those who weren't on their side could be harboring ulterior motives. Their allies might be peaceful now, but that was a facade. In the future, when they finally bared their fangs, it would be too late. Yi Lingxian originally hadn't known about all of this because Ku Jinying hadn't told her. However, she had asked Long Chen about it, and Long Chen had already told her about how he had seen through the false faces of the righteous path a long time ago. As a result, she didn't place her hopes on them. Now hearing this person's words, Yi Lingxian clenched her teeth angrily. Heavenly Fate Island is definitely behind this. You're the one sowing dissension. You bastards. Ha ha ha. Sowing dissension is the specialty of Pill Valley. As for Heavenly Fate Island, we just follow the will of the heavens. 
I'll tell you the truth. Having entered the Yin Yang world, Long Chen will never be able to return to the Martial Heaven continent. There will no longer be a Long Chen in the Martial Heaven continent. As for you, if you surrender, you'll have a high position. You can join us. As long as you condemn Ku Jianying for some evil deeds and help us topple the Martial Heaven Alliance, we will give you the alliance to lead. There will be no need for Ku Jianying to die first. You can become the alliance head right now. How's that? Asked the man from Heavenly Fate Island. As if, I, Yi Lingxian, will not betray my master even if I have to die. Raged Yi Lingxian. These people were really sinister. They actually wanted Yi Lingxian, Ku Jianying's most important disciple, to betray her. If she went through with that, it would be the final nail in the coffin for the Martial Heaven Alliance. Their morale would plummet, and they would really fracture. All right, then I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Once I kill you and give your head to Ku Jianying, I'll see if her temper really is as explosive as the stories say. Maybe she'll directly start a war. Haha, <laughs> laughed the man. However, his laughter was interrupted by an icy voice. How about I cut your head off instead and gift it to the master of Heavenly Fate Island? Chapter 1855 The Ancestor of Conning Translator Born to be that Heavenly Fate Island disciple thought that victory was in his grasp, that everything was in his control. But when he heard that voice, his expression completely changed. He slowly turned around. Long Chen, his voice shuddered. Behind him was the person he had wanted to avoid the most. Long Chen was slowly walking over to him with a cold smile. Yi Lingxian was ecstatic to see Long Chen, but she shouted, Be careful. This person is a master of calculations. Every move is within his expectations. This warning came from her own experience. This disciple had wielded his ruler while forming seals with his other hand, clearly constantly performing calculations. He was able to calculate attack, and speak all at once, that had fully shocked Ji Lingxian, she felt profoundly helpless against him, it was like they were playing chess, but each of her moves landed her further in his trap, there was no way for her to beat him, furthermore, in this location, there was no way for her to go all out, she could only use technique to win, but she was being read like a book, she had never felt so powerless, that feeling of having power but not being able to use it was hateful. Heavenly Fate Island's experts could not be judged according to just power. Their fighting style was absolutely bizarre, and it made others feel like they had no hope of victory. A master of calculations Long Chen still had a faint smile. If he really was a master of calculations, he wouldn't have entered the Yun Yang world. You've been fooled. At most. He is a dabbler Long Chen refused to believe this person could fight while calculating the opponent's next move. Even if there was someone capable of such a feat, it was definitely not someone like the person before him. In battle, a thousand changes could occur in a second. By the time he calculated the result of one move, he'd already be dead. So Long Chen refused to believe this person could be powerful to that extent. It's true, exclaimed Yi Lingxian. It's all right. I'll expose his scam. Long Chen suddenly stepped forward, a sword appearing in his hand. After that, a cold light calmly slashed toward the Heavenly Fate Island disciple. HMPH. Long Chen, you're too arrogant. Let me experience your moves to see if you are really as amazing as the legends say. The disciple's ruler slashed out at a diagonal angle. It just so happened to be Yi Lingxian's weakest spot, and she instinctively dodged. Missing Yi Lingxian. His ruler spun to strike Long Chen's saber. It looked coincidental, but it was an absolutely perfect move. This kind of technique was definitely not normal. He managed to force back Yi Lingxian and block Long Chen's sword just like that as if everything was within his calculations. The marks on his ruler lit up, and a portion of Long Chen's power was stripped away as if it had landed on cotton, making Long Chen feel like he couldn't unleash his power. Oh, this is a bit interesting. Ling Shen, get back. I'll exchange a few more blows with him. Long Chen was slightly surprised. It seemed he had underestimated this person. This one move of his was inconceivably perfect. It was not something that could be explained with common sense. Long Chen repeatedly attacked, using a different move each time. But that disciple blocked him every time. Sometimes, he would also take advantage of an opening to attack with his ruler. 
aiming for Long Chen's vitals. Although this heavenly fate island disciple had not unleashed his heavenly Tao manifestation, his aura was very powerful, and his attacks were sharp. Although he couldn't compare to the likes of Ziluo and true immortal Jiaoki, he was definitely the strongest existence below that level. Someone on his level was definitely worth being sent in by a nether passage expert in advance. All your techniques are within my control. All your secrets are in plain sight to me. In front of me, you have no chance of victory. This is all you have, sneered the heavenly fate island disciple. Yi Lingxian grew more and more nervous. She clenched her sword. Even Long Chen's techniques were well within this disciple's calculations. She prepared herself to interfere when Long Chen was in danger. Although that would damage his reputation, now wasn't the time to care about that. This disciple from Heavenly Fate Island was too strange. When it comes to conning people, I was born on a completely different level from you. I've used 19 different techniques now and you've blocked me 19 times and counterattacked 3 times. Your moves are quite varied, but your legs are like blocks of wood, and your waist is as clumsy as a pig. That's not how someone fights with power. Your so-called calculations are nothing more than you recording your opponent's moves and transmitting them to your divine item. This strange ruler. Your ruler automatically blocks and attacks for you. Does that have the slightest thing to do with your calculations? Who do you think you're trying to trick? sneered Long Chen. Nonsense. The disciple cursed angrily at Long Chen's words. Hearing this, Yi Lingxian was shocked. It was like a flash of lightning had appeared in her mind. She seemed to grasp something. Before this, she hadn't noticed. But now she found that this disciple's movements truly seemed to lack some synergy between his arms and legs. A normal person wouldn't see anything odd. But Yi Lingxian had experienced more than her fair share of battles. She was able to tell that this disciple wasn't using power from his legs or waist. That truly didn't make sense. No matter what technique someone used, they had to store up power to unleash it. Power always came from the feet, or the attack would be as light as a feather. This disciple wasn't fighting with his whole body, but he was still able to unleash quite a bit of power. That was strange. Was it all his divine item? Yi Lingxian didn't quite believe it. This isn't nonsense. Based on my years of conning and experience protecting myself from scams, I can see the special runes on your ruler. It has most likely recorded all the techniques and counters of the continent. As long as you show it what move your opponent is doing, the ruler will automatically come up with the most effective method to block it. This ruler is like an abacus, calculating the opponent's techniques. Heavenly Fate Island really comes up with some interesting things. You actually have something like this to scam others. However, this thing has a fatal weakness, said Long Chen. Bastard, don't talk rubbish. You are courting death, raged the disciple. His ruler began to shine as its runes lit up. Its power soared. What? Are you afraid of me exposing Heavenly Fate Island's scam? You might be able to con others, but you can't con me because I'm the ancestor of conning people. Since you refuse to accept the truth. I'll show you your ruler's greatest weak spot. Long Chen suddenly laughed. Then, just as suddenly, he spat at the disciple's face. This disciple had never imagined that Long Chen would do something like that. His ruler quivered and then actually became still. That disciple instinctively turned his head to dodge Long Chen's spit. But this action moved his face right into the path of a large hand. Long Chen's left hand slapped him across the face. His skin split open and blood flew. Right after the slap, Long Chen kicked him in the crotch, and a strange sound rang out. It was almost like the sound of an egg being crushed. A-H-H-H. -h -h -h. A heart-rending cry came from the disciple. He collapsed to the ground. His divine item was about to flee when Long Chen grabbed it. He then tossed it into the primal chaos space. Boom. The ruler actually fought within the primal chaos space. It exploded. It wasn't that it self-detonated but that the primal chaos bead had annihilated it. No one could go against the primal chaos bead's will within the primal chaos space. If it didn't submit, then the primal chaos bead would automatically destroy it. Even Long Chen couldn't stop it. Idiot. Long Chen shook his head. He wasn't scolding the disciple but the divine item. For it to go against the primal chaos bead, it had been courting death. Yi Lingxian covered her mouth. 
filled with disbelief. Even with her combat experience, she was stunned by this. This powerful and bizarre Heavenly Fate Island disciple had been handled just like this. A spit and a slap was all it took? Looking at the disciple groaning on the ground, she noticed that his legs had grown longer. Well, more accurately, the place where his legs split had gone up now. Long Chen's kick had truly been vicious. The pain from that place was something that even Heavenly Dao energy couldn't suppress. He was rolling on the ground, crying in pain. Long Chen's foot stamped on his chest. The sounds of a dying pig came to a sudden stop. The world became silent. All right, stop singing. I'm sure singing for so long takes it out of you as well. Let's get to business. Long Chen squatted down, looking at this disciple of Heavenly Fate Island. Chapter 1856 Ants Climbing a Tree Translator Born to be to the side. Yi Lingxin felt like she was dreaming. Even seeing that Heavenly Fate Island disciple lying there, she still couldn't quite believe it. Long Chen kicked the disciple, saying, You said that sowing dissension is Pill Valley's specialty. So are you saying that the main culprit behind targeting the Martial Heaven Alliance is Pill Valley, while you are just accomplices? I didn't say anything. That disciple's face had distorted from the pain. It was definitely the only spot no man could endure being struck. Not only that, but Long Chen had sealed his meridian so he couldn't block the pain with his spiritual yuan, let alone fight back. Oh, not bad. You have some gods. He, to tell you the truth, I really like people with gods, praised Long Chen. It just so happens that I'm looking for someone with bigger guts than me. I get particularly excited seeing a tough guy like you. Thank you for giving me such a chance. I hope I'll get to personally witness a courageous hero be born. What what are you thinking of doing? Don't get any crazy thoughts. I, Luo Shianji, am one of Heavenly Fate Island's four fate princes. If you touch a single hair on my head ah, that Luo Shianji hadn't even finished speaking when Long Chen reached out and yanked a bunch of his hair out. Even part of his scalp was torn off. Yi Lingxian jumped. Long Chen's actions were too sudden. Just now, he had been smiling so brightly. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What were you saying? If I touch a single hair on your head, what will happen? It couldn't be that you'll kill me for that, right? Gosh, wouldn't I have just provoked a calamity then? Asked Long Chen, feigning surprise. Yi Lingxian was speechless. How could a peerless expert like Long Chen look like a bandit now? However, Luo Shianji's previous actions had made it so that she felt no pity for him. Long Chen was helping her relieve her hate. As expected, evil people were best handled by evil people. You, Luo Shianji finally revealed some expression of fear. He recalled how Long Chen was said to never submit to threats. It was due to that character that he had enemies on all sides. For Luo Shianji to have threatened Long Chen now, he could only blame himself. He finally felt fear because he had heard that Long Chen was vicious and ruthless. There was nothing in this world that he didn't dare to do. What are the four fate princes? I've never heard of them, demanded Long Chen. Did this fool think that he could threaten him in his current position? Before Luo Shianji could answer, Yi Lingxian explained, The four fate princes are the top disciples of Heavenly Fate Island. The island master will eventually pick one of them to be his heir. In other words, one of the four of them will eventually become the new island master. I heard that all of them have abandoned their true names, instead taking on the name of Shianji, and using their master's surname as their surname. Since he's called Luo Shianji, his master should also be surnamed Luo. To raise a disciple on the level of the fate princes, his master should be on the level of the grand elders, with a cultivation base in the Nether Passage realm. My master isn't just a Nether Passage expert. He's the Vice Island Master. He controls the majority of Heavenly Fate Island's matters, shouted Luo Shianji. He was now using his own life as a bargaining chip. He had to show that he had enough value and enough of a background to make Long Chen have some misjivings about killing him. Perhaps that was his only chance to survive. This time, he was smarter and didn't add the part about not touching a single hair on his head. Long Chen wouldn't touch a single hair but would rip it out by the handful. Oh, how amazing. I've been rude. Since you're such a big figure, things are easier. Originally, 
I was worried that you wouldn't know much information, but now I'm at ease. Here's the first question. Are the people targeting the Martial Heaven Alliance backed by the full power of Pill Valley? Asked Long Chen. I don't just as Luo Xianji tried to say that he didn't know. Long Chen slapped him across the face. His skin instantly split open, and half his teeth fell to the ground. Long Chen's ability at slapping out teeth was very sharp. Long Chen, you know my status. If you kill me, you know the consequences, roared Luo Xianji. Kill you? No, I won't kill you. Long Chen shook his head. Hearing this, a trace of joy appeared in Luo Xianji's eyes, but he suppressed it. Long Chen acted like he hadn't seen anything and continued. I just want to see if the possible future island master is a true courageous hero after saying that. Long Chen took out a bucket. Ling Shen, you're in for a treat. I'll show you the 18 Iron Man tortures I learned from the jailers of the Phoenix Cry Empire. What are the 18 Iron Man tortures? Asked Ji Ling Shen. Long Chen smiled brightly. In the Phoenix Cry Empire's prisons, there are 360 forms of torture for the convicts. The tortures are split into different ranks. Low, medium, high, and Iron Man. It is said that the Iron Man tortures are so great that even a man made of iron would open his mouth during them. I've heard that no one can endure all 18 tortures, but I refuse to believe it. In the Phoenix Cry Empire, everyone is immortal and isn't skilled in cultivation. They will barely survive a single one. But cultivators have great life force and won't die so easily. That's why I also want to see if a person can survive all 18 tortures. If such a person exists, they are truly worthy of being called a hero. And I will respect them. Then up until now, has anyone survived them? Yi Lingxin caught on and began to cooperate. It's very regretful. But no one has lasted through more than 10. Sighed Long Chen. However, he quickly looked at Luo Xianji causing a bad premonition to rise in the latter's heart. However, perhaps I might succeed today. Oh, Grand Fate Prince, I hope you won't disappoint me. Long Chen began to encourage Luo Xianji as he arranged a stove on the ground. He placed the iron bucket on top of it and opened a hole. Let's start the first Iron Man torture. Ants climbing a tree, said Long Chen. Ants climbing a tree? That sounds quite interesting, said Yi Lingxian. Of course. In the Phoenix Cry Empire, the jailers would catch a few hundred fire ants and toss them in a bucket. The convicts would be bound to the barrel, their butt facing the opening. They would then seal the other side and raise the heat. The fire ants would go crazy from the heat and want to escape. There was only one exit, but it was covered by that person's butt. As a result, those little fellows would think of some way to get out. Ling Shen, let me tell you. I've heard that some of the amazing fire ants are able to crawl out through people's mouths. I don't know if it's true or not, but hopefully we'll be able to see today. Just wait here. I saw a group of fire ants when I first entered. They looked very strong and are probably a special variation. They were as thick as a finger. I'll catch them now. Grand Fate Prince. Hopefully you'll give me a good display. Long Chen began to leave. Yi Lingxian had originally felt the name to be quite interesting, but from his detailed explanation, she shivered. At first, she had thought that cutting Luo Xianji into pieces would be the only way to resolve her hatred, but now she was starting to sympathize with him. Having fallen into Long Chen's hands, he was doomed. Based on Long Chen's character, his goal wasn't to play with him, but to play him to death. You city people really know how to play, sighed Yi Lingxian. She had been born in a poor area. Killing people for their wealth was common. However, today Long Chen was opening her eyes to the world. Wait, wait a moment, shouted Luo Xianji with terror. Wait for what? I won't permit you to go back on our deal. I rarely admire experts, and if you back out, my admiration might turn into rage, said Long Chen. I, I, Luo Xianji didn't know what to say. I what? Don't worry. Those fire ants are very close. I won't make you wait too long. No senior apprentice brother Long Chen. Daddy Long Chen Grandpa Long Chen. Great ancestor Long Chen. I submit. Please. Let me go. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Pleaded Luo Xianji. He was broken. He didn't want to die. But Long Chen's techniques were worse than death. Thinking of those fire ants entering his body. 
let alone experiencing it. Just thinking about it was unbearable. He regretted entering the yin yang world. How had he been so unlucky to encounter a Yama king in such a large place? Long Chen, ask, said Yi Lingxin upon seeing him hesitate. Compared to asking questions, I'd rather see that display. I'm at a loss, said Long Chen. Yi Lingxin was speechless. Long Chen truly was a demon king. Even she didn't know if he was trying to scare Luo Xianji or if he really wanted to torture him. It's fine, we should have a chance afterwards. So I'll ask first, and if you lie, we can continue playing ants climbing a tree, said Long Chen. Chapter 1857 The Source Translator Born to be I wouldn't dare to lie, cried Luo Xianji. Long Chen suddenly slapped him in the face. Are you even a man? If you don't even dare to lie, what good are you? If you don't lie, how am I supposed to do the ants climbing a tree? Luo Xianji was still dazed from Long Chen's slap. Now he didn't even know how to reply. To the side, Yi Lingxin almost laughed. Long Chen was truly evil. Not even the truth was acceptable. All right, tell me, is Pill Valley the one trying to fracture the Martial Heaven Alliance? Asked Yi Lingxin. Yes, Long Chen slapped him once more, scolding. We knew it was Pill Valley a long time ago. Get to the details. The current Luo Xianji didn't view his life as a bargaining chip anymore. His life was fully in Long Chen's grasp. Death wasn't frightening. What was frightening was a life worse than death. More importantly, he had always been afraid of death. I'll speak. Pill Valley has great ambitions. These years, they've been competing against the Huai insect, and they want to topple it. They secretly expressed their wishes to the Martial Heaven Alliance years ago, hoping for them to stop buying the Huai insect's pills. As Luo Xianji explained, Long Chen and Yi Lingxin learned that a portion of the Martial Heaven Alliance's enmity with Pill Valley stemmed from the Huai insect. The Martial Heaven Alliance had refused Pill Valley when they had made that offer, saying that the Martial Heaven Alliance was nothing more than a united front for the righteous path. They could not restrict the freedom of the righteous path sects. Anything that was not beneficial to the righteous path's development could be thrown away. So they refused Pill Valley's request to monopolize the medicinal pill market. In truth, the Martial Heaven Alliance's decision was definitely correct. Only through freedom of competition could there be an improvement. With the monopoly, the righteous path would be controlled. Although Pill Valley claimed to be neutral, outside the world's fighting, who could say anything for sure? Who could guarantee that each generation of Valley Masters would not have any wild ambitions? If Pill Valley monopolized the medicinal pill market, the righteous path's life would be in Pill Valley's hands. They would be led by the nose. The Huai insect's pill market was very beneficial to the righteous path. The first benefit was that the price of the medicinal pills would be more stable. Pill Valley couldn't raise the prices to outrageous levels because they had competitors. The aftermath also proved that the Martial Heaven Alliance's decision was correct. As the world's number one alliance, Pill Valley hadn't dared to offend them. The Martial Heaven Alliance ignored where the medicinal pills came from. They accepted them from Pill Valley and the Huai insect, deciding which pills to buy based on the price and quality. When the Huai insect first stepped foot into the medicinal pill market, it had been supported by the Martial Heaven Alliance in secret. Their alchemy department rapidly developed to the point that they actually occupied a tenth of the pill market. A tenth might not look like much, but medicinal pills were not the Huai insect's main business. For them to have such accomplishments was amazing. They had forcibly ripped out a piece of Pill Valley's meat. Pill Valley had naturally launched a counterblow at that time. They had tried to step foot into the Huai insect's territory and start some auction houses. However, Pill Valley's people were all arrogant and disdainful of others. Everything they said was hurtful. So it wasn't long before this new department of theirs went bankrupt. They had no choice but to leave that market. They had even turned into laughing stocks during that time. It was starting then that Pill Valley's reputation began to gradually fall. Hearing this, Yi Lingxin and Long Chen immediately knew that Pill Valley wanted to use medicinal pills to control the entire world. To control the world, the Martial Heaven Alliance needed to be controlled. However, the leaders of the Martial Heaven Alliance had seen through their goals. Not only had they refused their request, 
but they had even secretly supported the Huaian sect this way. The Huaian sect and Pill Valley had become competitors, and the monopoly was broken. Without a monopoly, they were much less dangerous. However, it seemed that the Martial Heaven Alliance had underestimated Pill Valley's ambitions. Unable to control the Martial Heaven Alliance, they instead allied themselves with the corrupt path, the ancient races, the Xuan beasts, and even the ancient family alliance and some of the righteous sects. Through external pressure, they forced the interior to break. Clearly, Pill Valley had been scheming for a long time. The current Martial Heaven Alliance had fallen into Pill Valley's scheme and was now in a very dangerous and chaotic state. Heavenly Fate Island had only been drawn over to the lure of profit, becoming Pill Valley's helpers. However, when Yi Lingxin realized all this, her expression changed. Heavenly Fate Island's power to peer into the heavens allowed them to make very accurate predictions of the past and future. If they had allied themselves with Pill Valley, didn't that mean they had foreseen Pill Valley's victory? Had the destiny of the Martial Heaven Alliance really come to an end? Don't fall for their self-claimed fate reading abilities. The future can't be read. They only know a few superficial tricks used for conning others. For example, isn't this fellow one of the four fate princes or something? He should be very skilled amongst their disciples. But if he could read the future, how could he fall into my hands? Mocked Long Chen. Yi Lingxian's eyes brightened. That was true. If their calculations were always accurate, how could it be that this person had been unable to see the imminent danger that had been about to befall him? Little bird, tell me, how many people came from Heavenly Fate Island this time? Asked Long Chen. 19. All four of the Fate Princes have come. The rest are all elites amongst elites. We were sent in with the first wave, said Luo Xianji. He explained it at all very clearly because he knew being half-hearted would only earn him a slap. So many people entered in one go, so they're targeting me. Long Chen's lips curled. Yes, pow. Explain in detail, ordered Long Chen after another slap. Luo Xianji lowered his head, his eyes filled with hatred and rage. He was one of the four fate princes and had never been treated this way. However, his life was in Long Chen's hands, so he obediently said. Yes, they mostly came to target you and the Dragonblood Legion, as well as her. He nodded toward Yi Lingxian. Our mission this time is to gather all the experts and annihilate you within the Yin Yang world. Once you're dead, the Righteous Path's morale will receive a fatal blow. That's also our mission. Yi Lingxian's expression changed. Long Chen, you should hurry and send a message to your Dragonblood Legion. No need. I just saw them. Right now. These fellows have no intention of attacking. My guess is that they are still taking advantage of this time when everyone has only just entered the Yin Yang world to gather some treasures. As for the Dragonblood Legion, that's a matter for later. Furthermore, even if they wanted to gather everyone to attack us, everyone is currently searching for their own treasures. So no one would listen to them. Yi Lingxian nodded with a bitter expression. It seems I'm still a fool compared to you. Yi Lingxian was also a genius who had soared from a low background. She had experienced many obstacles, many pitfalls. Normally, she would view herself as smart enough, but now she found that her head wasn't as good as she thought. Long Chen had seen through this point without even thinking about it. She couldn't even retort against his guess. In the end, brains won't let you change fate. It relies on power. Long Chen shook his head. More and more. He was admiring the old man. The heaven-splitting battle sect's cultivation style was definitely correct. As a result, Long Chen understood the phrase man proposes. God disposes even better now. Little bird, tell me, do you know how to lie? Asked Long Chen. No, definitely not. Luo Xianji hastily shook his head. Then do you need me to teach you? To the side, Yi Lingxian was speechless. This fellow Long Chen really wanted to play Luo Xianji to death. Luo Xianji lowered his head, not responding. His hand shuddered slightly. He was clearly infuriated but forcibly suppressed himself. To tell you the truth, cooperating so well leaves me no reason to use the 18 Iron Man tortures on you. So I'll just ask you another question. Who is this old ghost? Long Chen waved his hand. His spiritual strength condensed into the image of an elder. That elder's expression was icy, his eyes filled with rage. 
His gaze looked like a sword that could pierce a person's mind. Master, Luo Xianji couldn't help being surprised. This person was his master, but he was also the elder that had attacked Long Chen when Long Chen had returned to the Eastern Wasteland for his parents. At that time, he had arrived one step before Heavenly Fate Island's expert. After capturing that expert, this mysterious elder had launched a spiritual attack from across space. That attack was something he had been powerless to resist, but the Divine Gate Star had automatically launched a counterattack, forcing his opponent back. What Long Chen didn't know was that the Divine Gate Star's counterattack hadn't just forced back his opponent, it had destroyed that person's heavenly eye that he had only condensed after spending years of effort. That elder was Luo Xianji's master, and the expert that Long Chen had slain in the Eastern Wasteland was another one of his disciples. He had never mentioned the destruction of his heavenly eye to anyone, nor had he ever told anyone about his defeat to Long Chen. It was too embarrassing. That was why even Luo Xianji didn't know about Long Chen's enmity with his master, nor did he know that a portion of Heavenly Fate Island's decision to join Pill Valley came from this elder's enmity with Long Chen. So he's your master. Haha, <laughs> this must be fate. But I just want to ask you one more question. Is your hand trembling because you're angry? Because you're afraid? Or is it because you're preparing some kind of sinister move to kill me? Long Chen looked at Luo Xianji with a faint smile. Luo Xianji's expression suddenly changed. His gaze was sinister as he slammed his hands together into a hand seal. Two strange runes erupted from between his hands. Die. Light exploded from Luo Xianji's head. A ray of light shot through the runes from his two hands and those runes transformed into divine power. Long Chen didn't even have a chance to dodge. Even Yi Lingxin was encompassed by that divine light. At the same time, a terrifying spiritual pressure descended. Chapter 1858 Attack of the Divine Gate Translator Born to be Luo Xianji's expression was sinister. He had a bad feeling that Long Chen had seen through his intentions. However, at this point, he had no choice but to release this final move of his. He had to bet everything. The divine light shot out of his glabella, passing through his hands. The runes on his hands were activated, and divine light enveloped Long Chen. Yi Lingxian's expression completely changed. This was the pressure of a Yuan spirit, and it was so powerful that she couldn't move. This kind of power was not something a soul transformation disciple should possess. It's the pressure of a nether passage expert's Yuan spirit, exclaimed Yi Lingxian. The instant that Long Chen was enveloped in that divine light, the light in front of him condensed into the form of an elder. That elder was precisely the one that Long Chen had shown before. It was Luo Xianji's master. Without a word, the elder's palm slammed forward, filled with the power of his Yuan spirit. Old fellow, I've been waiting for you a long time. Long Chen smiled mockingly. Suddenly. His own Yuan spirit appeared and formed a hand seal. This hand seal had a triangular hole in the middle. Within that small hole twinkled a single star. It's you. Only then did the elder see Long Chen's face. His expression suddenly changed. He pulled back his palm and slammed his hands together. Just at that moment, the divine gate within Long Chen's mind see opened. The light of the divine gate star was unleashed, and a sharp sword made of Yuan spirit energy shot out. Long Chen actually activated the Divine Gate Star to attack. Boom. The Elder's image was pierced by Long Chen's Yuan Spirit Sword and vanished into nothingness. It happened so suddenly that it was over before Yi Lingxian could react. That Elder had just appeared before vanishing. The old ghost fled quite quickly. An unhealthy rosiness appeared on Long Chen's face for a while before he suppressed it. That was the price of unleashing this attack. This attack was something he had come up with after almost being killed by this elder the first time. At that time, the Divine Gate Star had activated automatically. Later, by constantly communicating and testing the Divine Gate Star, Long Chen had figured out how to unleash this attack to prevent such a scenario from occurring again. This was also why Long Chen hadn't directly slain Luo Xianji. Instead, he had acted like he hadn't seen his actions to draw over one of Heavenly Fate Island's experts. Last time, even that disciple's soul had possessed a restriction that summoned the Elder. Luo Xianji was one of the four Fate Princes, so he definitely possessed a similar defense. Regretfully, 
Long Chen's attack was one step too slow for this crafty elder. As soon as he sensed the danger, he fled. Long Chen's attack struck nothing more than an empty image. With his current power, Long Chen still couldn't properly utilize the Divine Gate Star's full power. So, using it came with a certain price. His spiritual space was shaking, and it brought with it a soul-tearing pain. This attack that he had been preparing for a long time had actually been avoided. Long Chen couldn't help being irritated. How dangerous within a certain cave of the Martial Heaven continent. The elder's expression was pale. This elder was one of Heavenly Fate Island's Grand Elders, as well as the Vice Island Master, Luo Xianji's Master. A strand of his Yuan spirit had been within Luo Xianji's mind seat to prevent the worst-case scenario. It would allow the elder to kill Luo Xianji's enemies if he needed it. This strand of his Yuan spirit was something he would have been able to pull back if it was within the Martial Heaven continent, but this time, it had happened in the Yin Yang world. As a result, his Yuan spirit was now permanently damaged. That was very detrimental to his future cultivation. Naturally, he wouldn't leave any of his Yuan spirit on ordinary disciples. It was for disciples that he cared about deeply or who had special missions. Previously, when he had sent a disciple to the eastern wastelands, that disciple had just been a core disciple and had not reached the qualifications to be protected by his Yuan spirit. However, since his mission had been to capture Long Chen's parents, the elder sent along a wisp of his Yuan spirit to protect that disciple and keep track of him. When Long Chen had tried to invade that disciple's soul, it had activated that wisp of his Yuan spirit, and as a result, the elder had almost been killed. The Divine Gate Star had followed Long Chen's Yuan spirit to destroy his heavenly eye. This time, it had been even more dangerous. Long Chen had actually learned how to control the Divine Gate Star and make it attack on his own initiative. This idiot, I told him not to face Long Chen. If he did encounter him, he was supposed to direct people over to him in secret. My words actually went in one ear and out the other, raged the elder. Long Chen was not within the domain of things that they could calculate. Only by calculating things about the Martial Heaven Alliance, the Dragonblood Legion, the Zhuanshan Dao sect, and some other people near Long Chen could they get a general prediction of Long Chen's next action. So Long Chen was extremely dangerous to the people of Heavenly Fate Island and the disciples who had been sent into the Yun Yang world had been warned not to approach him. They should run as far as possible from him. In truth, this matter was also this elder's fault. Luo Xianji and the others thought that their skill in reading the future meant that they would be able to tell when danger was about to befall them. They also had the attack of a nether passage expert's Yuan spirit to rely on. If he had told Luo Xianji that his Yuan spirit attack was useless against Long Chen, Luo Xianji would definitely have run immediately instead of arrogantly testing Long Chen's power. No good. I have to alert the others. They have to stay away from Long Chen, or those idiots will just send themselves to their deaths one by one. The elder's expression was gloomy as he walked out of the cave. Luo Xianji was dumbfounded. The incomparably powerful and godlike master of his had actually fled as soon as he had seen Long Chen. Luo Xianji's entire body felt cold. He despaired. At that moment, he suddenly recalled the words his master had told him. Don't get close to Long Chen. Regretfully, he understood too late. Long Chen, I beg you, let me go. I don't want to die. Luo Xianji knelt on the ground, begging. In front of death, his heart crumbled. Yi Lingxin looked at him contemptuously. She hated people like this the most. They looked at others like they were ants that could be crushed as they pleased taking lives without batting an eye, but when it was their turn, they began to act pitiful, they never thought about the people that had begged them to live as well, give me a reason, said Long Chen indifferently, Luo Xianji suddenly clenched his teeth, I can tell you a major secret of Pill Valley, in truth, behind Pill Valley is, Luo Xianji's whole body suddenly stiffened, Long Chen's expression changed, and he hastily reached out, placing a hand over Luo Xianji's forehead. His powerful spiritual strength surged into Luo Xianji's mind. See, what is behind Pill Valley? demanded Long Chen. Regretfully, Luo Xianji could no longer answer. When Long Chen's spiritual strength invaded Luo Xianji's mind. See, 
he saw the latter's Yuan spirit rapidly withering away. His spiritual strength was unable to stop it. Long Chen let go, and Luo Xianji's body fell to the ground. His eyes were staring blankly ahead. It was a spiritual restriction. He probably didn't even know about it. As he talked about something protected by that restriction, it devoured his Yuan spirit, killing him, sighed Long Chen. Even the four fate princes would be killed to keep the secret quiet? What kind of secret could that be? Yi Lingxian was stunned. Long Chen shook his head. Things were probably more complicated than he had thought. Before dying, he said that there's something behind Pill Valley. Is he saying that there's another backer behind Pill Valley? Or that Pill Valley has more moves left? Yi Lingxian's expression was grave. This giant scheme was shockingly huge. Don't waste your time worrying about things you can't change. I also won't change myself to follow other people's plans. Life is like a game of chess. There are countless experts and wily old foxes that have lived for countless years. Who could possibly beat them? Said Long Chen indifferently as if he didn't care about this giant scheme. Then what should we do? Asked Ji Lingxian. Raise our own power. When others find you to beat you in chess. Smash their chessboard and then smash their heads. That's all. Long Chen smiled. I'm being serious. Said Yi Lingxian. So am I. If you understand. Then you understand. If you don't. Then you won't get it no matter what I say. So rather than wasting the effort. Let's focus on searching for treasures. Long Chen flipped through Luo Xianji's body but didn't find anything rare. He saw a jade plate carved with monstrous images that he didn't understand. He guessed it had something to do with calculating the future. The rest of what he had was just a few spirit crystals and some weapons. But most unexpectedly, Luo Xianji's spatial ring was of a high enough grade to store divine items. He had over 30 divine items inside. Although the majority were quasi-divine items, that was definitely not bad. After emptying Luo Xianji's pockets, Long Chen and Yi Lingxian moved on. Searching through the rest of the area. Chapter 1859 The Mysterious Gate Translator Born to be Long Chen Even now, I don't understand how you defeated Luo Xianji, said Yi Lingxian as she looked at Long Chen carefully picking a precious medicine at the edge of a barrier. She was truly puzzled. Long Chen had defeated Luo Xianji far too easily. It was unbelievably easy. It had to be known that she had been driven almost insane by Luo Xianji's ability to predict her moves. That feeling made her want to cough up blood. She felt powerless. Long Chen plucked a small hairy grass. However, its hair was actually tiny thorns. He continued searching as he said. Originally, I thought that you had experienced about as much as me and wouldn't be so easily conned. It seems I've overestimated you. Stop spouting nonsense and tell me said Yi Lingxian. A magic trick depends on the cover. Have you not seen any magicians performing tricks on the street? Asked Long Chen. Of course I have. But what does that have to do with Luo Xianji? Demanded Yi Lingxian. I already said. 90% of Heavenly Fate Island's abilities are used for conning people. When he fought with you, he relied on mental warfare, making you befuddled and unable to fight effectively. In truth, all of his abilities were worthless. That ruler of his had memorized the techniques, fighting style, attack angles, and counterattacks used on the continent. The one fighting you was actually the ruler, and the reason he could make you feel powerless is because of this special location that does not permit you to unleash your full power. If you could, he wouldn't have necessarily been a match for you. His trick relies entirely on his divine item. Do you understand? Asked Long Chen. No, Long Chen looked at her. I say, you look smart, but you still don't understand. Fine, I'll call you smart. Now stop keeping me in suspense, said Yi Lingxian, rolling her eyes. Long Chen had tiptoed around the answer this whole time, refusing to answer directly, making her teeth itch. Heavenly Fate Island gathered the techniques of all the sects and schools of the Martial Heaven continent and came up with the most efficient way to counter them. This kind of method is useless for most people because a person can't react that quickly. However, the divine items of Heavenly Fate Island are able to precisely calculate what technique to use. When they see the beginnings of your move, they can see through your technique, 
and the divine item will come up with the most effective way to counter it instantly. The reason I could break it so easily was because I have two peerless divine abilities that I've perfected, unique to me. His divine item was unable to calculate how to counter my divine abilities. As for Luo Shianji himself, having relied on his ruler for so long, his own reactions are slower than normal people. After spitting at him, he instinctively dodged and then I slapped him, adding a kick to break his third leg. Then, he collapsed. Life is just that simple. Long Chen shrugged. Just that simple. Just that simple. Yi Lingxin was surprised. But she also found it funny. Based on what he said, that Luo Shianji was nothing. Her fear for Heavenly Fate Island vanished. Long Chen, you're really smart. Praised Yi Lingxin. What did you say? I said you're really smart. Yi Lingxin instantly understood he was playing her based on his smile. And she angrily said, If you want to hear fawning. I'm sure there'll be an endless line of people who will sing your praise. So why bother? That's different. The praise and worship of a beauty. Well, that feeling of accomplishment is completely different. Chortled Long Chen. No wonder Master told me to be careful of you. Saying that your strongest point wasn't your combat power but your pickup arts. I don't know how many beauties you've tricked with this mouth of yours. Yi Lingxin turned her head toward Long Chen. What? The Alliance head. She actually gave me such a high evaluation, exclaimed Long Chen. How shameless Yi Lingxin shook her head. Despite knowing he was doing it on purpose, she still couldn't hold back some laughter. TCH, who needs shame, said Long Chen righteously. Long Chen suddenly bowed ever so slightly while looking solemnly into the distance. What? Are you bowing to your master? Asked Yi Lingxin with surprise. No. I'm paying my respects to the me that had shame and integrity. The day I stepped into the cultivation world, they were buried. After all these years, I don't know how they're doing, sighed Long Chen. Yi Lingxin laughed, never having encountered someone like this in her life. He talked about serious things like they were jokes and jokes like they were serious things. Have you ever been serious in this lifetime? Are you trying to make me laugh my guts out? Demanded Yi Lingxin. Of course I've been serious. When I kill people, I'm always very serious, said Long Chen, suddenly squatting down to pluck another precious medicine. Yi Lingxin put away her smile. I came here because I heard someone say there were countless medicines here. You want to see if there's something that can extend one's longevity? Asked Long Chen, carefully digging out the medicine. Yes, that's my main goal. If the Martial Heaven Alliance can have the four Grand Elders supporting it, even if the times become chaotic, the Martial Heaven Alliance won't collapse. But without them, the Martial Heaven Alliance really will have lost its support. Just Master alone can't hold it up. Sighed Yi Lingxin. Why are you thinking about your Master first, and not you? You are the future Alliance head. This kind of thinking is unacceptable. Said Long Chen. Me? That's impossible. I'm a far cry from Master. Yi Lingxin shook her head. What are you lacking? You both have a head on your shoulder, so why is she capable of it, but not you? It wasn't as if the Alliance head was born the Alliance head. She also never expected to become the Alliance head. If you are constantly thinking of hiding beneath a big tree's cover, you are looking down on the sword that your master gave you. She has entrusted everything to you. That means she trusts that if she one day disappears from this world, you will pick up her burden. Long Chen's words struck Yi Lingxin deeply. She suddenly understood. The Great Era has come. In truth, this Great Era refers to our generation and most likely only our generation. The Martial Heaven Continent's Qi flow has concentrated on our generation. Have you not seen how many Empyreans have appeared in our generation? Even the four Grand Elders were just ordinary Empyreans who didn't manage to awaken their manifestations. Even with the Great Era, they are unable to awaken their manifestations. Why? Because this era does not belong to them. They have entrusted all their hopes to us. Why can our generation fight across realms so easily? It isn't because we are so talented but because we were born at the right time. The great era's chi flow has descended into our bodies. In other words, the stage will belong to us. You were actually hoping for the Alliance head and the Grand Elders to hold up the sky? How foolish is that? Even if the Grand Elders were in perfect health they would only be able to support us for a while. 
when our generation starts to break through to the life star realm, their superiority will instantly vanish. So don't place your hopes on others. Think more about how to raise your own power. You've made your choice. So don't abandon it, said Long Chen. The Great Era's descent concentrated its power on only one generation. People who had missed their golden cultivation time were not affected as much. Even if people were unwilling, there was nothing they could do. An ordinary expert who encountered a celestial would have to lower their head. A celestial, no matter what rank they were, would be suppressed by an Empyrean. What would the weak bring out to fight against the strong? People who had missed this era, who were already old, and whose life accomplishments had already been mostly set in stone, were unable to soar like them. As for the junior generation, each day they grew stronger. The world would belong to them in the future. Even if their seniors wanted to push themselves, they were powerless. Seeing Yi Lingxian seemed to grow solemn, it seemed she realized just how much pressure she was under. Long Chen stood and patted her on the shoulder. Don't worry, being a leader isn't as difficult as you imagine. Furthermore, you will definitely be stronger than the Alliance head and more suited for the position. Otherwise, she wouldn't have given you her sword on the very first day. And don't you also have me? I'm also a member of the Martial Heaven Alliance. Whether the leader is the Alliance head or you, no matter what difficulties you encounter, my Dragonblood Legion and I will stand beside you. Thank you. However, I'll work hard to stand by myself. I'll prove to my master that she wasn't wrong. Yi Lingxian took a deep breath. She patted her chest confidently. Good but next time, don't pat your chest or the huge waves will make criminals of others, warned Long Chen kindly. Bastard, where do you think you're looking? Shh, there's something ahead. Long Chen suddenly shushed her. Yi Lingxian thought that Long Chen was once more messing around and trying to change the subject, but she quickly heard strange sounds ahead. Let's go. Long Chen and Yi Lingxian carefully went in the direction of the sound. They didn't even know how many mountains they passed. Suddenly, they saw a giant gate. And seeing the situation in front of him, Yi Lingxian almost let out a startled cry. Chapter 1860 Within the Mountain Gate Translator Born to be the reason Yi Lingxian almost shouted was because she saw bloody corpses suspended in midair. Their bodies were naked, their skin stripped, revealing their bloody flesh. Surrounding the gate were countless vines. They were like sinister pythons, just waiting to devour others. Those corpses were like melons growing on the vines. Their blood didn't drip down to the ground. Instead, it flowed up the vines. This is probably the work of some very powerful tree demons, said Yi Lingxian. Those corpses hanging on the vines all possessed powerful auras. They were clearly Empyreans, but such figures hadn't even managed to escape. From this fact, it could be seen just how powerful these tree demons were. It's just a display of power. Long Chen looked at the hundreds of corpses strewn across the ground. If these tree demons really wanted to kill people, they should have hidden all this mess and launched a sneak attack. That would be easier. This appearance was clearly a warning. Let's go. Long Chen pulled Yi Lingxian over. Wait, don't we need to investigate what's going on? Said Yi Lingxian. Who has time to investigate? Just charge through. If they dare to block us, we'll kill them said Long Chen indifferently. When the two of them approached the gate, the vines instantly began to move like vipers woken from a nap. They glared at the two of them menacingly. Long Chen ignored them, continuing forward. When he was just a few miles away, thousands of vines suddenly shot toward him like spears. At the same time, the ground behind them suddenly burst apart, and vines came flying out to surround them. HMPH. A little tree demon also dares to be arrogant? Today, there is only death for you. If I were to personally fight, it would practically be bullying. Ling Shen, you kill it. Long Chen rolled up his sleeves and shouted. Stop joking. Can you take a look at the situation? Raged Yi Ling Shen. Originally, she had thought that Long Chen would be unleashing some kind of ultimate move to eliminate these vines. But he actually wanted her to fight instead. Yi Lingxian unsheathed her sword, and her manifestation appeared behind her. There was an image vibrating within it, and the sound of a sword came from it. Yi Lingxian's manifestation had also started to awaken. When her sword came out of its sheath, sword chi cut through the void, falling upon the vines. 
Although blood-colored runes appeared on the vines, they were still severed. As they were cut to pieces, a blood-like fluid splashed out of them. It was like they were bleeding. One of the thorns on the vines stabbed into the ground, piercing straight through it like it was snow. These vines weren't just tough and sharp, but they were also shockingly heavy. It was no wonder those ordinary Empyreans were unable to survive. Nice. Long Chen cheered on the sidelines. Yi Lingxin was truly powerful. It was just that normally, she was a bit hesitant. When she fought, she would immediately become courageous, even a bit domineering. It was just like Ku Jinying's style. Let's charge our way through. Don't get entangled by them, reminded Long Chen. These vines were just branches from the main body, and they came in a limitless tide. Hence, fighting them was meaningless. The most important thing was to reach the gate. If what's inside is even more dangerous, wouldn't we be throwing ourselves into the trap? Warned Yi Lingxian. Without entering the tiger's den, how do you obtain tiger cobs? Let's go. Riches lie in danger, called Long Chen. Yi Lingxian pressed forward, her sword chi slaughtering the vines. Blood splashed everywhere, and the vines were unable to stop her. They quickly arrived in front of the gate. Suddenly, vines thicker than a house burst forth from around the gate forming a giant net around it and blocking the two of them. Yi Lingxian's face was cold. Her sword swung, and a sharp aura erupted. A dragon's cry came from her sword. Long Chen was startled. Yi Lingxian truly was powerful, and she hadn't activated her divine item. Instead, she had used some unknown power to seemingly compress her energy before unleashing the attack, bringing forth destructive power. The huge vines were blown apart. Long Chen and Yi Lingxian both shot through the opening, entering the gate. Once they entered, they felt their bodies lighten. It was like they had entered a different world. The spiritual chi in the air was so dense that it almost became liquid. It actually had a buoyant effect on them. They looked around. The huge vines didn't attack any longer. The broken parts on the ground began to heal. Those severed vines regrew, and the blood stains were absorbed by them again. Everything quickly returned to its original appearance as if nothing had happened. The two of them immediately understood that these vines only attacked those on the outside. Once you passed, you wouldn't be attacked any longer. Heroin Yi is mighty and domineering. Admirable Long Chen raised a thumb at Yi Lingxian. Yi Lingxian glanced at him before ignoring him. She carefully examined the surroundings. There was a completely straight path before them. At the end of their sight was a mountain range. Those mountains soared into the clouds. Mist revolved around them, making it so they couldn't see them clearly. Following the path, Long Chen suddenly saw something that made him pause. He bent down and picked up a withered branch. There was a mass of dead branches on the ground here. Yi Lingxian said, These branches look like they're from a willow. They're willow branches. It seems Chu Yao has been here and fought. These branches are cut cleanly and even the undying chi of the branches has been severed. Since they didn't smash the branches, it means this person has condensed their power to a terrifying level. Whoever fought against Chu Yao didn't waste the slightest bit of energy. Good. It's been a long time since I've encountered the Blood Kill Hall's experts. Let's see what figures the Blood Kill Hall came up with this time. Long Chen smiled coldly. He was almost sure that the one to fight here was an assassin from the Blood Kill Hall. Only they could have such sharp attacks. They continued onward. Long Chen wasn't worried about Chu Yao's safety, as there were no signs of intense battle on the ground. Chu Yao hadn't fought that person for long. She had most likely rushed in deeper in search of treasures. This also meant that the person hadn't posed a fatal threat to Chu Yao, or she wouldn't have pressed forward without doing anything about them. Both of them quickly arrived at the mountain range, and a mountain blocked their path. The path was broken here. Long Chen stopped, summoning a pair of lightning wings. He directly flew up. The mountain peak has been carried away. There was probably some treasure on it. The two of them had just flown over the mountains when they saw that the top was missing a piece. Based on the marks, it had been excavated not long ago. Ling Shen, I'm going to go find Chu Yao. Most of the treasures have been taken by others on this path. We should split up. I'll find Chu Yao, and you search for treasures. Look for places others haven't been, said Long Chen. Although he felt that Chu Yao shouldn't be in any danger, he still wanted to go find her. 
He didn't want to waste any of Yi Lingxian's time. She was the heir of the Martial Heaven Alliance and had to have powerful karmic luck. Her chances of finding some peerless treasure should be quite high. As for his own luck, he didn't think he had any chances of finding anything. Furthermore, he had to follow the path that Chu Yao had already taken. So they should split up. All right, be careful. Yi Lingxian nodded. You're the heir to the Martial Heaven Alliance. So change your attitude of trying not to offend anything. Now you need to consider your actions from the viewpoint of the Martial Heaven Alliance. Whether or not they provoke you, if they are your enemies, you should eliminate them. If anyone wants to fight over treasures with you, then they are trying to hold you back, to weaken you, which is to weaken the Martial Heaven Alliance, stalling its development and throwing it into danger. If the Martial Heaven Alliance is endangered, the lives of billions of the Righteous Paths experts will be threatened. So anyone who dares to fight over treasures with you is an enemy of the Martial Heaven Alliance. Killing them is not wrong. Understood. Asked Long Chen. Yi Lingxian had been very righteous while being a loner. Long Chen needed her to be more domineering. I understand. If not for anything else. Just to not disappoint my master. I would fight against the world. Yi Lingxian nodded. Then that's enough. Go. And good luck. Long Chen and Yi Lingxian split up. Long Chen rushed along a path. While Yi Lingxian hesitated before going another direction. Long Chen quickly flew over the mountains. He didn't sense any powerful magical beasts or treasures, but he did see that many of the mountains were gone. They should have just been excavated, but he had no idea what was on them for them to be so valuable. Flying through the air, Long Chen smiled. He could already sense Chu Yao's aura. Having used the Wood Spirit Union with her, their spiritual strength was closely connected. Furthermore, this place was different from the nest of the blue eye peacock. There was no suppression of spiritual strength. So Long Chen could already get a general sense of Chu Yao's direction. After a while, that feeling grew even clearer. The reason he smiled was because he sensed that Chu Yao had noticed him as well. As expected, after crossing a few more mountains, he saw Chu Yao standing there at the peak of a mountain, looking like a beautiful fairy.